Alright, let's begin. If you can hear me, type 100. It looks like we're starting the tournament already. Oh, Kalyan. Alright, I gotta close my chat. I'm just gonna get right into it. Hello, Zalama. Oh, wait. I was supposed to add Froden. I was supposed to add Froden on the client. Oops. Wandering trainers woke. I gotta go close my uh, meditative tea. How crazy would it be if I just instantly lost the game right here on my dummy? Oh wait, true damage guardian? Not bad. Pen kills super fun. Okay, I'm not, no one else got true damage, it's really good for me, but a lot of people got super fan. I'm just gonna lock this in. It's really good. Yasuo. Money start, nice. Uh, I'm probably supposed to take this Yasuo. The only better headliner would be like specifically a cannon. Yeah, I'm gonna take it. I wish for a tree damage Yasuo, but this is probably fine. I got like a full econ start. On a roll, Yasuo. Uh, no. I think it's just AFK. If only I could sell this bard, but in general, like AFK with econ starts really good. Cool, I time to eat. Yeah, it would have been super optimal if I made 20. But this Yasuo was pretty good. We're making 10 is already above average. Oh, you know who I need? I need a Yone. Yeah, 
Yeah, a Yona would be crazy. Edgelord and Crow Diver. Hmm. What items do I want? Let me think about this. I feel like BT is probably fine. We're gonna play Akali. Or Adaptive Helm. to lose that. I wanted to get Carousel Pryo because if you get a spat you just win the game. Mm hmm. Not good. I mean, just pray for no spat. Forehead. I wonder if honor roll was correct here. I could have done honor roll yeah, so I've done it before. But you wouldn't be able to hit much else because Kenan is so contested. A lot of people have super fans. No spat, please. Hmm. Can you know the sword's actually pretty good here? I'll specifically take the cannon, not the gnar. Okay. Uh. What's my end game gonna look like? For now, it's probably just gonna be like, play Yasuo and Yone with this BT slam. I alone decide my fate. Um. Oh, I was offered cybernetic, huh? I was I should probably take cybernetic next time if I see it cuz it's true damage. No, nah, if it was definitely worth it though. Uh, I'm pretty sure I should, should, should just level here. I have hard steel. I don't think this is a game to play hard steel though. Like my econ's already really good. I think I just maintain good econ. No need to play this set. 
I think my team's gonna look something like this. Caitlyn in the back, Akali in the front, Garen as a sentinel. Oh wait, actually, you can't really do Garen as a sentinel, huh? Wait, when did I get my headliner? I got my headliner... Fuck, I don't remember, but... Um... I think I'm supposed to pre-level here, or full level. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to pay one gold to have a better shop. Oh, spat? Oh, man. Dang it. Wrong unit. Sterex is pretty good. Um, I think Morello's is really good. I'm gonna do Sterex. BT Sterex seems really solid. Um, yeah, you're probably not playing Zack. Oh, a bit of an unlucky gold orb. I'd rather just have 10 gold at that point. Play around on Akali then. It's not reached the summit. I do kind of like Pandora's items here. The game really caps out when I hit Kiana. Okay, I get a lot of freedom here. Um, I'm probably just gonna do more Elo Senna. And then I wonder what the best last item for Akali is. If you're doing true damage Akali, you have BT Sterex. I don't think it's a Titans, it's probably like IE. Something like that. This is one of the situations where I wish I could see the stats. I can also play Akali pretty easily here, uh, Karthus here. Yeah, there's definitely room for Karthus. Maybe I'd drop the Sunna later. Next round, I will level up. Oh no. He looks strong. Oh god, my ass also inted. Alright, well at least I'm first pick. Uh, if I'm very lucky, I'll get a spat. Otherwise, I believe I want a belt here, or really just a unit. Spat or good unit? There's a Viego and there's a Caitlyn. I think the Viego is better. I 
I think the Viego is better. Can you, I easily have like the Pentakill package now. So you can swap out the Senna. Play Viego, or Senna and Caitlyn instead play Viego Karthus. I think this is pretty solid. You don't need to play so many true damage. Uh, I'm pretty sure if I roll once, I'll see a new headliner. Let's see. I was wrong. What items do I want here? I need to think about this. Let's assume Viego's gonna have BT Titans. It's probably a red buff next. Probably not a Blitzcrank game. Well, definitely not a Senna. And then probably not a Yasuo. I shouldn't chase like the, the spats too hard. Okay, so I, I built a Morello, so I don't need red buff anymore. I uh, don't believe I need Garen. Do I want Titans here? Yeah, I think it's Titans. So save a chain vest, and then for Karthus, he'll have Morellos. And then what? Probably like a Shojin. Fly these units at the end. For a collie. Thank god I faced two people that are both raising the stakes. My brain was slow, that was my bad. Uh, wandering trainer game, hard to navigate, but I'm pretty sure I just need, um... I need a Kali, Karthus, or Viego headliner. damage. Uh, I have to take this for now. Wait.
Yeah, this will have to do for now. Okay. Um, so how do I want to fix this? Well, first... Don't need Viego, right? Then you're at 3 Sentinel. Then you're at 3 Guardian. I mean, I think this will do for now, though. The Zed actually like works because I have Crowd Diver. I probably need to keep rolling though and hit like one more unit, like a Karthus 2 or a Kali 2. I actually don't know what Zed's super fan item is. I guess I'll find out. Oh, there's a spat. Oh, that's literally perfect for me, but I don't think I'm going to get it. Interesting. It's probably true damage Karthus. I think it's the easiest plug-in. Okay, I need to roll for like one more carry. Here's a cane. Uh, I, I need to keep rolling. I, I'm sitting on so many pairs of like good things. At least hit a two-star Akali or Karthus, please. And then yeah, for spat. It's either pentakill or tree damage. And I've got Pandora's items, so I can like I can like wait for it as long as I need to. One Kiana would make this so good. That'd be my six true damage with the spat. And then true damage card, this would be like the perfect ending, I think. The Zed will do no well for now. Did I lose? Oh my god. Come on, Karthus. Oh my god. Whew. This is not better. Actually, it might be. Uh, Pentacle. I need to save a chain vest. 
Uh, turn into a chain vest. Turn into a chain vest. Nice. Uh, Nico needs to go in over something. Over at Lily, I believe. And Kale needs to go in as well. Sucks that to sell that card this battle is too poor. Really need a Viego 2 here. Um, Nico goes in over Lilia. And then someone needs to go in over someone. rolling first. I didn't scout. Oh my god, I didn't scout. I I was oh, I spent too long thinking about my board. I think it's actually it was actually Lilia over Echo. Like who cares about four true damage, right? Alright, come on, Albert. I can use my target, my crowd driver dummy. I guess it's not a crowd driver right now, but I can use my target dummy as bait later. I just have to keep donkey rolling for this Akali 2 or York 2 or Viego 2. It's such a big deal. I'm so sad that I can't hit it, but I've been too dizzy to scout, so I'm guessing I'm very contested. I just didn't realize. I definitely have not been playing this game very well. There's a York, if I can get it. Yeah, a good amount of Akali's and Viego's out. Um, I guess it's just a York item here. An interesting risky play would be to take that hard seal spat and then try to reroll it. Because honestly, like, you could reroll it into true damage spat. You could reroll it into uh, pentakill spat. But everyone's at like two lives. Everyone's at two lives. I'm at three lives. I don't think I should risk it. Damn it. Damn it. All my units are out of the pool. I'm sitting on four high value pairs. Well, the Nico's my fault. I sold the Nico earlier. But everything else is just sad. I've been rolling for so long. I'll be happy with the top four, honestly. I think there's like eight Akali's out and like seven Viego's out. Come on, just give me a, a top four. 
I don't expect much at this point. I, I know I'm contested. I missed on my roll down. Do this. I'm gonna trap my Viego intentionally so that Viego tanks the Karth Assault or the Akali ult. I'm doing this because I don't want to sacrifice the dummy in the corner because it's only one in two much chance. This is very frustrating. I mean, it's fine. Sometimes you just don't hit. Am I dead? Okay, surely some other people are dead. Okay, top five at least. All I can do is hope that I beat Dr. L. Like, I didn't hit anything. I've been I my I've been, my build's been locked in because of wandering trainers and I just like did not hit. I've been sitting on so many pairs. This is so painful. Of such high value units too. Uh I think at this point I have to like high roll the York to get fourth. My card this is not bad at all. Oh my god. instantly died. Is there any chance that this York 2 saves me? I don't think so. He's strong, but not that strong. Is there any chance this Karthus one-shots everything, no counterplay? No. It's a sad world out there. That's fine. I think for not hitting, we did a pretty good job. I sat at level 8 and rolled like 120 gold, and I still had all 1 star 4 costs, besides my headliner. Hitting 6 Karthuses doesn't mean anything if I don't have the money to go for the, the ninth. Hitting 2 Akales and 2 Viegos with items for them is so sad. Akali was a really important one, because uh, I could have easily done 4 true damage. And then 0 Kianas. We're not healthy enough to go 9. Can't go 9 and roll for Kiana, because the lobby's too close. Failed to hit Kiana on the 120 gold roll down. Game changes so much if I'm able to hit that. The York at the end was great, but it was just too late. Needed a team. Fifth is fine. Yeah, it's fine. I think I played the early game really well, which allowed me to save HP and get salvage placements for what is otherwise a very unlucky game. I'm ready to mentally move on. Guardian Executioner, holy shit. I was wondering why my board died so fast this Samir 3.
Wait. I just realized this is crazy too. It's like the perfect endgame one. Heart Steel Jazz Mosher. He has four jazz. Oh my god. He has like perfect synergies. That's woke AF. I can open my chat now. Oh, guys. Did the lobby get one guide? No, actually, everybody voted for Wandering Trainer. I mean, it's fun. It, the game, it's definitely not fair, but like, are we here to have a competitive experience? Says the guy playing in the in TFT's most competitive tournament of the set. No, we're not here to we're not here to or we're not here to play competitively. We're here to have fun. No, I'm actually not surprised that we voted for this. There is skill in navigating your spot, but like, there definitely is. Uh, like, a bias of, like, some people just get better trainers. Well, thank you, TYB Shenier. Box box, you can check stats mid-game. Oh, really? There's no rule that prevents you from checking stats? Oh, fuck yeah. I didn't know what item to build on Akali, and I had, like, infinite choices. In the end, it didn't matter. I didn't hit Akali, too, but... I was like frustrated that I couldn't check my uh look it up. Okay, then I'll just look up stats mid game. A little hunto no revu. Thanks at 31 months. Alright, fifth place in a low roll game is not that bad. In my other low roll game I went eighth when I didn't hit, because I didn't save any HP. Once you sold your echo, shouldn't you convert Akali to KDA. Uh, you can't. Because you have uh, you have two true damage, one KDA. If I kept the Lily, I could. But also, a one-star Akali is not killing anything. It needed to be two-star. Also, the items I had on her are better for true damage. Guys, we're doing a ready check. If you're ready, type R. Thank you for making dungeons. Maybe that week much better. Yes, dungeons is very fun. We'll be back soon. How many games today? Uh, six. For some strange reason, I always enjoy the feeling of pulling out a cold can of coffee. And it's so specific to the point where I've started pulling out cold cans of coffee, not drinking it, just because like I get back into a game and I'm thinking. And then afterwards I'm like, oh, my coffee is warm now. And then I like put it back in the fridge and pull out a different can of coffee. Infinite happiness loop. All right, I gotta close my chat. See you guys after this game. Um, okay. I went fifth last game, which I think was a mistake. I should have gone first. This time I'll decide to go first.
has no flavor. Uh, Kennen is useful. Cassante is useful. Misfortune, probably too early. I need to hold the Strinx. I feel like I might actually play the Nami if I get Discoteric. Edge of Night. Maybe a Yasuo Headliner. Uh, oh man, that's two Terex and then a Disco Nami. I think I'm actually going to take it. Double the funk. Oh, my items are pretty bad for double the funk, though. Actually, I actually have, like, really bad items. I think I still take it. I think I'm down to commit. Guaranteed to be uncontested. I have a pretty good start for it right now. I think I have to just slam the Giant Slayer. It doesn't feel good, but like, I, I'm i already gonna play around. I can only play around one of my three components. I think you have to like slam Giant Slayer and be sad, which is very unlucky. But I, I do believe this is my best angle. Oh, it's really sad. It, it's like barely an item. Like it, it is an item, just not a good one. Okay, this is definitely a game where I need to go in. Well, let me scout first. Is anyone really strong? Is anyone so ungodly strong that I'll always lose? No. Alright. Well, I'm committed. It's a disco game. I'm not gonna buy this Amumu. I think I'd rather just like have chances of a two-star cannon. Okay, if I don't five streak, I think the game is over. In fact, uh, this this whole decision tree was like so awkward. My items was titans, or it's sword, bow, chain. It's like you could make a titans, you could make an edge of night and play some melee carry, but I didn't have any melee carries. I had a lot of disco units. Oh wait, I think I lost. Okay, um, I probably should just forfeit the game. Well, you can't forfeit in a tournament, but I should probably just give up. I am beyond broke now. I am so broke, it is not even funny. I'm also locked into Disco, and my items suck. I'm ready to give up. I got, I got Nami RNG'd. She, like, has, like, a 20% chance of just wasting her bubble on a dead target, and they still haven't fixed it. It's been an issue the whole set. I'm guessing like she's just such a not important unit. They don't care to fix it. Or maybe they just said, yeah, that's just part of her design. She just wastes her ult 20% of the time and just 20% of the time you lose automatically. I got a bad Nami bubble. She wasted it and I lost. I went level five. I have no econ and now I have no streak. And I have shitty items and I'm locked into the worst build in the game. What's the point? But look on the bright side, maybe you'll natural a TF3.
Yeah, maybe I'll get a TF at five. Yeah, maybe it's not so bad. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think I'm supposed to sell here for Econ and then just try to get Tarek 2 later. I, I need to make 10 and on the streak. Honestly, I probably should have slept nothing. I was concerned about how much HP I would lose if I didn't slam anything, but like, this is garbage. This is actually garbage. Why did I do it? There are zero endgame units on this board who want this item. I actually should have just slammed like bow and that's it. And then waited for a full creep round, and then just like didn't push levels. I slammed it because I thought I could 5 streak, because my, my start was so good besides the fact that I had bad items. <sighs> it's fine. Maybe I'll hit a TF. We do have a Gragas 2 and a, and a Kench 2, which is really good. Easily a five streak if we didn't face that one guy with the and get the bad bubble. Nah, I think slamming translator was correct. It, it was a five streak if we didn't low roll. You had to be unlucky to not streak here, and that is what happened. But I think it was the correct choice to go for it. Five streak secures the top four. Maybe we can still build a streak. We'll see. It's really funny that my game plan is actually just like my game plan unironically involves natural ATF. Cause this build is so weak. And my setup is so bad for it, besides like with the item. I probably just slam this giant star on TF, but it's just a really bad item for him because it doesn't give him one of the many effects that he needs. Oh, please give me like a reforger. Reforger would make this playable. Oh god. Wait, he's got 40 gold and E3? Uh oh. Oh god, I'm facing him. Okay, honestly, he doesn't have the rest of his team. Maybe I can win. Losing here would be very, very sad. I need to set up a, a, a five streak. I have a feeling I'm gonna lose this. <sighs> well, it's not Freaky Friday. I don't believe it's Roll the Dice. Radiant Relic is a bit awkward here, but I think I might have to take it. Stationary support's really gambly. Uh, I mean, stationary support gamble might be what I need to try to win this. Pray for a good one. Pray for a good one. Uh oh. Still 
It's not horrible, is how I would describe this. Uh, it is two things that buff to the side. One buffs one hex, one buffs two hex. So you probably throw it in the back once you have five disco. But right now, it's pretty hard just to justify throwing it in the back. Uh, I could try. What does it look like if you throw it in the back? It'd be like right here. Yeah, it'd look like this. Uh, okay. I'm definitely playing for like a fifth or a sixth here. My my board's gonna fucking suck. Sorry, I'm I'm being so negative. I I can't decide if I was supposed to slam the Giant Slayer because I was almost guaranteed to streak unless something crazy like a strong opponent and a Nami missed bubble happens, or if you're supposed to not slam it because I'm just gonna com fucking complain about the Giant Slayer the entire game. It's so bad, even late game. Yeah, like I'm already playing a shitty build. It's so it's so sad playing a game knowing that like you're just gonna slowly bleed out. I'll try my best. There's a TF on Carousel, but he's got a sword. I wonder if I just take it anyway. If I get get the option. Best item is definitely rod here. Okay. Uh, if it's gone, then at least I can mentally just say, all right, well, I just grab the rod. Rod is by far the best item here. Makes even defensive items too. I think on 4-2, I'm going to send it. I'm going to let everyone else do their roll down. And then hopefully, like, there's so many units out of the pool that I natural my TF for free. That That's the plan here. Just pray that I get gifted the freest TF of my life. Save HP, go 9, or save HP, get TF3. Because hitting a 4 cost 3 star is actually not that hard if nobody stops you. If everybody else helps you by holding other 4 costs, and then you're the only one going for TF and Blitzcrank, it, it could actually happen. I've had ranked games before where I pull a three-star Blitz or something out of nowhere because no one wants these units. Okay, I haven't been keeping track very well, but I think I'm getting a Headliner next round. I was wrong. I probably should just remember the last round that I bought a headliner, and then I can calculate which rounds I'm going to get a headliner on. It sometimes affects when I'm going to level. I mean, look on the bright side. It's kind of like last game. Like, I saved HP, so even if I miss on my rolldown, and even if my build sucks endgame, I can still get, like, a fifth. I'm not out of the tournament if I go fifth. It's just going to look a little bleak, because I went fifth last game. If I go fifth here, then I just have to play, like, a bit above average for the rest of the tournament. Which is doable. I mean, like, you could literally just, like, high roll a first, and then you're back. Actually, you'd be more than back. You only have to high roll a second if you go fifth twice. I really hate backline dummies. Like, luckily, at least they synergize, so, like, I'm not putting it in the back just for one of the two items. I'm putting it in the back for both items. So there's that going for me. Okay, this Gragas is a Chad. Uh, but like, it wastes a lot of tank stats, so I'm not too happy about it.
I kind of want to buy this Gnar, but uh, I'm pretty sure I just sack one and then go eight. And then play like anything. Oh no. Oh no. A spat of all the rounds to, to high roll a spat. No, of all the games to high roll a spat, it's the one where a spat's not useful. <laughs> Please, don't do this to me. Morellos and Sunfire are both pretty good here. I think the Morellos will be better because of the way TF's ability works. Also, am I really going? Am I really leveling up here with like two gold to roll? But if, if I wait, I'm gonna be pretty screwed. It's not best friends. I don't think it's healing orbs. Oh, it's probably a big grab bag, actually. This lets me do a few things. It lets me reforge the spat into a random component. And then it lets me reforge the giant slayer. Okay, I'm actually down. And then, let's just not roll here. Okay, so when I sell this Nami, I'm going to reforge Spat and Giant Slayer together. This also gives me like a chance to see if I hit. Giving blue buff might be okay. Like I might hit Ari Headliner. Ari Headliner is playable here. If I don't hit on this rolldown, I am probably on fast track to like 6th or 7th. Okay. Uh oh. Lots of Karthus, lots of Akali. This guy's TFs for some reason. Oh, okay, he's selling. Holy shit. Everybody hit a 2 star 4 cost. Oh no. I think I'm actually gonna go like 7th or 8th this game. I just scouted and every single player in the game has 2 star 4 costs. I haven't even begun rolling yet. We are actually in a situation where everybody hit. Okay, you know what? Just give me a spat. Like, I'm still stuck on my headliner Nami because I'm actually so poor because of what happened earlier. Come on, Gragas, you can do it. Alright, come on, spat on Carousel. I'm begging you. Wait, on a Ziggs. Oh my god. Please, nobody want this spat. Please, nobody want this spat. Dude. Dude, that was actually like instant game winner. If only I lost 4 HP more, or if this guy didn't need it. Oh fuck, it's not even good for him. He's like banking on hitting exactly a chain vest. Alright, well, enough, enough tilting over that. Hit your TF like right now, or die. All right, well, the answer is death. Yeah. 
The answer is death. I not only did I am I playing the worst build in the game, and I'm behind like 30 gold the rest of the lobby, and I failed to get my fawn. I also did not hit. I am actually going to go eighth place this game. I waited. Everybody else is holding like two or three two star four costs. Zero of my blitz cranks and TFs are contested, and I waited a long time and I didn't. Oh, I hit. All right, all I have to do now is, what? Uh... Natural like a TF3 from this spot and I win. Yeah. Also, uh, I'm pretty sure I need to sell this Gragas. And then this Echo needs to be like, or not Echo, this uh, can needs to be changed out. I'm just gonna sell him now, cause like, if, if you're not hitting something better, you, you deserve to lose. Same with this Gragas. If I don't hit something better than Gragas, like, there's no way. All right, I have to actually hit like the God board from this spot. I have to basically hit like Alawi and Ziggs to even have a chance. I believe I am dead. Honestly, I'm over it. Some games are just like that. I did my best. My best play was to play around the disco that I was given. My items were fucking horrible. It was still worth it to slime it. You easily five streak if you don't massively low roll from that spot. We massively low rolled from that spot. Then we, because we were poor, because we low rolled, we then tried for a later roll down after every, we let, we did the correct thing. I let everybody else, then the four cost pool roll for their own contested units. Everybody else hit, literally all seven of them did. And then I rolled for my uncontested units and I didn't hit. It happens, I'm over it. I am mentally ready to move on from TFT and go uh, go play Tekken. For the rest of the, the games today, I'm going to just try crazy strats for first, because uh, anything else, like, you're already out. Very frustrating. I completely whiffed my roll down game one, completely whiffed my roll down game two. Got fucked on items game two as well. <sighs> Happens. All right, I can open my chat now. Hello, everybody. We all saw the same game I did, right? That was like lame as fuck. Got an insanely good angle for the worst build in the game. I then didn't hit anything once I locked it in. I hit so hard at the beginning. It's like, you'd be stupid to not take this free top four with Disco. And then we completely whiffed. There's no chance of getting contested. Incredibly high chances of hitting because everyone else is going to thin the pool for you. No one's going to touch your units. And then we didn't hit. I also got fucked on items. I locked it in and then I got sword, bow, chain, sword as my first four drops. Yeah, we also got fucked on prismatic augment. Having to take wandering trainer is really bad.
You're basically like gambling that you get the perfect um, support items. For what it's worth, my support items weren't that bad. But I needed something really good to salvage the situation. Even if it was free, isn't it a sin play to play Disco in this meta? Oh, isn't it a sin to play Disco in this meta? No, I, I played Disco earlier in the tournament. I played Disco in a game where I didn't have as strong of a start as this game. And I got third almost first. Why? Because I wasn't contested and I hit all my units for free. I did exactly the same like line of thinking as I did in this game. This game I just didn't hit. Some games, even if you're reverse contested, as in everyone's contesting units that aren't yours, you still don't hit. And that is exactly what happened here. I have no control of if I miss on my rolldown or not. I have no control of all seven of my opponents hitting on their rolldown. I scouted on 4-2 and all seven players had a two-star four cost. I'm like, dude, I didn't even have money to roll for a two-star four cost yet. But yes, like, Disco's the worst build in the game, but you can play any build if you hit hard enough. I played Disco early in the tournament, and I went third almost first. And it's almost first, as in I had eight TFs at the end. I had eight TFs at the end with a pretty strong level nine board, and then I failed to hit the last one. Why? Because he's completely uncontested, so it's super free. But like, yeah, again, not to repeat myself too many times, but that's not what happened here. So it's quite depressing. So I'm gonna just do some crazy play for first over and over and over and over again. And then if I lose, like, again, it's fine. I, I feel pretty mentally over this set. I haven't been having fun in it for over a month now. Uh, so I'll just move on. I'll play Tekken or do something else until uh, set 11 comes out. I like TFT as a, as a whole. I'm just like not that interested in this set. I was uh, I was talking a lot about this earlier. I while I was playing Tekken, I was like, I'm having so much fun playing Tekken. I would I'm almost like down to just forfeit the tournament. Cause to me here, anything other than a make it to day four and like do very well in the tournament and like try to go to regionals, anything other than that, it's like a waste of time to me. If I made it to day three, in a previous tournament, I'd be very happy about that. Being like, hey, I did pretty good. I played in a tournament with the best players in NA, and I made it to the, like the top 25%. But uh, right now, if I made it to day three and then lost, I'd feel like I wasted my time. Yeah, uh, for the next four games, I'm gonna just do ridiculous first or eighth strats, and then pray I get like three firsts. And then after that, I'm gonna just go play Tekken for the rest of the month. I'll do my best, and then I'll have no regrets afterwards. My friend's gonna win the lobby, I think. This is my friend, my IRL friend. He's popping off. He went eighth last play, last lobby. 
But now he's playing a really woke uh, Trickster's Glass, Trickster's Glass, Trickster's Glass, what the Forge said with pumping up. Box box, do you think this set would be fundamentally different if headliners didn't come as two stars? Uh, there was a discussion about this at the beginning of the set, and the conclusion that the TFT dev team came to was that if if headliners didn't come as an instant two star, then the optimal rolldown was very unfun. You would literally just like not buy a headliner until you were you already had two of the unit. You would never buy a headliner Ari unless you like already confirmed Ari two. And you also wouldn't buy headliner Ari if you were if you already had a two-star Ari, even if you were playing KDA. And it's like very awkward. So uh, that's why it has to come as a two-star. I mean, in general, I think the mechanic is just too high variance. It was like fine in set four when people were b bad at the game. But now that people are better optimizing the game, there's too much variance on people who get good headliners and people who don't get good headliners. Like one of the most frustrating gambles I, uh, I face in TFT is when you go level five play for a win streak, and then you know that you're going to get a free headliner because it's every fourth shop. If you buy your headliner on 1-4, then you win three rounds and you pre-level, your next shop is always going to have a headliner and it's a 70% chance of a two cost. And there's a lot of situations where like any two cost headliner will spike you really hard, like literally any of them, because just the value of a two star two cost in stage two is really high. So like if you lose the 70-30 gamble, like go fuck yourself. Like you lose the game. You don't even get to play. Uh, it's happened to me so many times where like a five streak is lost because you didn't hit any two cost headliner, which you had a 70% chance to do. And then you faced a guy who did hit a, seven, uh, a two cost headliner. It, it, the game is literally saying like, go fuck yourself. And like, I just think it's, it's way too high variance. I've all, if you've also experienced like, have you ever experienced the one roll wonder where you go eight roll one time and hit exactly the unit you're looking for? Like, it does happen. It's happened to me, like, a, a couple times. Uh, if you are looking for, like, a specific headliner, like, you're playing KDA and you're looking for Ari or Akali specifically, the odds of you actually hitting on your one roll wonder, it's actually, like, one out of 50 games. It's, like, enough that, like, every player probably experiences it once or twice per set. Or throughout the, whole, the entirety of set 10. And, like... You win the game, and you don't even feel like you were good at the game. You just won the game because you hit an ultra-high variance roll. Like, that's like the equivalent of if some guy in set 9 uh, hit three Jarvins in one shop at 8. Which, that's like a 1 in, one in a 1,000 kind of thing. In terms of like how much impact it has on your game. Headliner is fun as a casual mechanic, but it is way too um, way too high variance, in my opinion, for me to feel good about the game. Out of curiosity, I looked at the standings yesterday. Uh, I looked at everybody, like how well they did in the tournament and what their previous seeding was, and like you could argue that players like are better or worse under tournament conditions, but like you'd expect it on average. On average, the better players should be winning. But that's actually, like, not what happened. Uh, in this tournament, it was basically random who made it through. The seeds, like, were crazy in terms of, like, there was, like, no pattern. There was no general trend of, like, the higher seeds performed better. It was just, like, randomly people made it or didn't make it. And I, I feel like the game is too high variance. I definitely think like, okay, I say all this about high variance, but I, I want to I want to also make it clear like, I also will take responsibility for my mistakes. Like there are a lot of games where I did not play optimally. 
My frustration is whether you play optimally or not, it doesn't really matter because the 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 high of hitting a strong headliner early is so strong, and the um, the low of like not hitting any playable headliner like just fucks you. Games where you're 100 HP, level 8, 50 gold on 4-1 can be lost like instantly uh, if you fail your roll down. My game was like mostly fucked going into my roll down, but like, if I had hit my TF immediately, I probably still top four there. And it it feels like everybody is just like gambling for these like ultra lottery cash outs, as in like the correct headliner. And like there is skill in recognizing when you have a quote unquote good enough headliner. Like if I was level eight, fifty gold. I don't need a TF headliner in this spot. If I was level 850 gold, I could play an Ari. And it takes skill to recognize that Ari is decent there. But it will still just lose to the guy who says, yep, me pentakill, and then hits Viego on the first roll and hits uh, York on the second roll. And like, you didn't get outskilled, you just got owned because he was luckier. It's gotten to the point where like I no longer even feel good when I win because I know I just got luckier than my opponent. There have been times where TFT feels like the better player wins, where I feel like I won because I was better or I lost because I was worse. And when the environment is set up like that, it feels really good to win. Now it doesn't really mean much to me. Anyway, sorry for complaining so much. I've just been... Uh, pretty burned out of TFT recently, and then low rolling a tournament like this two games in a row uh, really brings out the worst in my mental. Anyway, I'll stop complaining. Let's move on. How long until the next game? Uh, after lobby three finishes, we'll take a five minute break to reseed and then we'll notify everyone of the next round lobby. All right. Probably have about 10 minutes. Thank you, crazy man. How does one join the cup? Uh, you have to be in the top ranks, top 160 players in the server, and then you can join. Oh, well, you also have to sign up. The way they advertise the tournaments is really weird. I didn't even know that the tournament, like I qualified for the tournament by hitting the correct rank. And I, I didn't even realize like what was going on. Until one of my friends messaged me, he's like, "Hey, if you don't fin if you don't fill out these legal forms in two hours, you're not gonna be in the tournament." I was like, "What? How was I supposed to know that?" And it was apparently like it was in my business email. I was like, "Oh, my my bad. I didn't check. I don't check my business email regularly." There was no announcement or anything. If my friend didn't randomly tell me about it, I would have not even been able to play in the cup because I wouldn't have filled up like the release form or whatever. Isn't that actually your bad then? I mean, they didn't tell me it was going to be in my email. You just happened to... You had to have randomly checked your email. I'm pretty sure like 75% of the, the players in the tournament would have missed it. 
get ready for the next battle. Round one. Fight. Oops. Are you so quiet today? Well, I'm pretty mad. I mean, what do you want me to do? I just got fucked in the tournament. I just low rolled two games in a row. I'm basically out, but I have to play for four more hours. I'm sitting here just playing Tekken, waiting for the next match to start. Round one. Fight. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say no more mad? I mean, do I look mad? I, I'm more disappointed than I am mad. I'm disappointed that this is how the game is. Round two. Fight. I'm actually getting rolled. Am I dead? You lose. You know, it took me a while to realize this because right now I'm playing uh, with my game sounds really loud. My character moans a lot. Get ready for the next battle. Why is Boxbox mad? What happened? Do I look mad? 
I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> and maybe frustrated is the word. I, I like don't want to play the rest of the tournament, but I have to. I got fucked in the first two games. It happens. Sometimes you low roll. Get ready for the next I, I would drop out right now if I like could do so without being dishonorable or banned from future tournaments. I basically have to play for first like three times in a row. Very frustrated with how like the games went. Like Fight. I'm pretty sure I played the best I could. I just didn't hit. I narrowed down my win con both games and then I didn't hit. It happens. Usually in ranked I would just say, eh, it happens, move on. Like, it's fine. I'm not gonna, like, scream or break a chair or anything. Oh, shit. Round two. Fight! How many times am I get hit by that move? You lose. I've only watched five minutes of Tekken, but it seems like one good combo wins the match. I, uh, if you land the launcher, the thing that knocks them into the air, then you get forty percent of the health bar if you do it correctly. And then if you do that Round two more times, one. but it's definitely not just Fight. one good combo. It probably feels that way because um. After you land your combo, you get to 50-50 for another combo. Oops. Fuck. I landed my launcher, but I, f I failed the follow-up. But also, like, I think at the higher level, if both players are good at the game, like, I'm not good at the game, so... Take what I say with a grain of salt. I just failed my rage art. I. Round two. If you, both players are good at the Fight. game, I don't think either player is going to be landing launches very often. It'll mostly be poke, like that. Lodo Master. Oh wait, are we starting? We might be starting. Shit. I think I have to give up this. I'll just let him kill me. You lose. Oh, we're not starting. Fuck. I could have played it out. I saw people talking, and I thought that they were talking about starting the game. Okay, I got fucked. I just logged on to Tekken, and I got owned 12 games in a row. But I definitely, like, just played bad. Is the enemy life stealing? Yeah, that, that girl can heal herself. It's her shtick. Actually, every character in the game life steals, which is kind of cool. It makes it so that even if you're at 1 HP, like, you still don't want to give up, because if you land one combo, you're kind of back. Even if you're at 1 HP and your opponent's at 100, if you land one combo, you go to like 20% HP and they go to like 60, and it's like kind of winnable.
What's your character special? Uh, she has huge boobs. Hello, Mr. Qtex. Oh god, we have to type R if we're ready. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just try my best. Uh, and then not care about the result. I'm gonna go and play for first every single time. country. Mercy has no flavor. Okay. Computer, calculate the odds of getting a glove here. Actually, we know what the odds are. It's one in seven. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, one in seven. All right, give me that one in seven chance of a, an IE start. Okay, tier is not good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Healing orbs. Oh, could be patient study. I'm not like particularly locked into anything. I think I'm down for patient study. Country Kench. Oh, kind of regretting not picking up that earlier Kench. Uh, if I lose this round, which I think I will, I should probably sell, actually. Patient study is not good for country. The moment I didn't hit glove and then didn't hit a good combat augment, I was, like, not down to play country anymore. I think patient study has angles. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure we don't play country here. I'm pretty sure you just play loose streak. It's not the greatest without econ start. But, uh, yeah, this, this is not it. Just play for a loose streak, make 10. I, I'm very comfortable with, like, the KDA and pentacle line. I think I'm just gonna do that. 
Let me do this. And then I probably just won't slam any items. Last time I didn't have good items, so I didn't slam. Alright, so I slammed a bad item and then I really, really regretted it. This time I'll just not slam anything, go for the full loose streak. Okay, I bought my headliner on 2 2. No, I bought my headliner on 2 1. No, but I sold. Okay. I need to keep track of when I bought my headliner. I, I'm probably going to play Ari. I like Ari because she's decent enough. Spikes hard with a spat. Uh, has multiple side carries like Karthus and Akali. And then you can sometimes uh, hit a 3 star. Uh, this cannon is actually pretty good. This kind of looks pretty good. Um, if I'm playing for loose streak, I think I just make 20. Maybe I'm supposed to sell this Gragas as well. Because if I sell the Gragas, I can pick up this Lilia. Lilia is one of those units that, like, you will probably hit a 2-star, but if you don't hit a 2-star, you're really going to feel it. Because you really... In KDA, super fans, you really just need your units to like have power. You need your like weak frontline to like at least have two star HP. Okay, we're probably taking our rod here. Well, actually, interestingly enough, if I take a tier, I could actually play Israel. Hmm. <sighs> or a spat. I like this three gold tier. I think I'm gonna do it. Rod is like decent. It makes Morellos, it makes Gunblade, it makes Jeweled Gauntlet, it makes Gwinsus, but it doesn't make any of them right now besides Morellos. This makes Blue Buff right now, which is good on Lulu, Karthus, and Ari. Now I can start narrowing down my game plan. Start to pencil in super fans. <sighs> yeah, uh, since I'm in a position where I basically have to play for first or I'm dead, uh, I'm gonna just like do super like loose streak and gamba strats. I feel like there's not much else to do. I'll just get probably a loose streak for a while, try to go 8, build a board that can go 9. Battle is a dance, and the fortunate find their part. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I want to make 40, I have to sell my Seraphim. Well, I think definitely selling because there's a weak player, but. Oh, it does feel a little bad. Keep only the Mordekaiser. Really sucks for this guy. You know, this actually reminds me of the drama that happened yesterday. If you're out of the loop, there was a guy who was playing Heartsteel, and then he like raised the stakes, and then here he faced a guy who was open for it, like me, playing Loose Streak. 
And then he was basically like, okay, fuck you. And then he spent the rest of the game. He like sold all his heart steals and then uh, just pivoted into him to make him lose so that he couldn't make it to day two. And the, the guy who griefed was already out of the tournament. I'm pretty sure I need to buy this just to pass the round. But yeah, the guy who was griefing was already out of the tournament. Uh, and then he was like, all right, fuck you. You griefed my streak. I'm going to grief your tournament. It was interesting. This Olaf's not the greatest. His trait's good, but I definitely want unit value, and I'm not specifically looking at Pentacle right now. Well, I'm definitely making a blue buff. Worst case scenario, we can go on a Kali. Best case scenario, it goes on like a Lulu or Ari. Oh. My items are not looking very hot. But I'll do my best to manage. Maybe like blue buff Ari, Shojin, Karthus, something like that. I feel like last stand is actually the play here. I personally like Magic Wand because I don't like playing one HP last stands. But if I'm playing for first, last stand could actually be it. Magic Wand is pretty good here. Fuck. I think it's last stand. I'm pretty sure, like, I have to try. It's one of the situations where, like, like, I, I basically need a first to stay alive in this tournament. I need a miracle. Last stand is probably going to give me that. If I weren't really far behind, I would have just taken um, Magic Wand, which is like pretty solid here. You get a Gunblade or Morello's guaranteed. And then, in general, you you know your team is going to benefit from the AP. But if I have Last Stand, I'm definitely not rolling here. If I took Magic Wand, I'd probably like level and roll a little bit here. We're just going to play first Earth here. <sighs> okay. I uh, I should there's not much to do right now, so let's just take this time to like think about what else is happening? This guy's going for Kale reroll. So he'll contest the Mordekaisers. This guy is going for what looks to be Karthus Akali. This guy looks like he's going for Akali. I mean, I'm going for Akali as well, but I think I get first dibs. For item here, it's almost always a rod. I think. Gunblade and Morellas are both super solid items. <sighs> okay, uh, yeah, get a rod here if you can, or a spat. Maybe a glove if it's on a good unit. Uh, 
Oh. Of all the ways to like try to go play for a miracle first, it would be going for a big vertical like KDA, 10 KDA or 10 Pentakill. Problem is I don't have the rod or the chain, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of praying. It's definitely gonna be like, we're gonna go down to almost one life pretty early. I really don't like the existence of augments like last stand. It's good for me in this particular spot, but I definitely don't think it should exist. The fact that it like throws the concept of HP, HP preservation out the window. Doesn't feel right to me. Okay. Uh, I need to like roll for uh, like any moderately playable headliner. Yeah, honestly, that sounds good enough. Uh, I'm actually just going to slap this on Echo because he's my headliner. And then I'm going to fix it later. Unit-wise, you probably throw it on the Akali right now if you want the strongest board, but... It's not a big deal. We're not really trying to win. I just like, don't want to go to 1 HP too early. Actually, we're going to be going down to one HP pretty soon. All right, it's fine. I feel like you're you're always going to get last standed here, and then you're just going to, like, pray that you are the best. Yeah, we're just going to pray that we're the best. Uh, my execution hasn't been very clean, so I think there's, like, a pretty high chance I go, for, I go eighth. I have to, like, scout very meticulously and make sure that I always am ready for every matchup. Like, don't get cheesed by an Akali. Don't get cheesed by, like, some weird gimmick. I'm probably safe to slam the Shojin. Well, I mean, not much point in doing it right now. Might as well wait. See what headliner I hit first. Good loss. Hmm. Okay, we probably just leveled to 8 here. Alright, I'm gonna hang on to this set. Actually, you're probably never hanging on to this Seraphine. And then I'll buy this more at the end. Need a rod or a chain. Okay, pentakill spec. That's pentakill Akali. Oh, and rod. Really good items. Alright. Uh, can be a one roll wonder that hits... Yep. Alright, I'm going nine. Pentakill... I'm just gonna blue buff Akali. Shojin. I like Morello's here. And then BT. I don't know if this is the best set of moves, but whatever. I'm satisfied. Then we then we get Super Fan in. Need uh, Nico. Oh, did I lose? Honestly, not a bad loss. I guess I did only roll like once. Ah. Uh, oh, I did some LDP tech earlier. That could actually be the play here. Yeah, I could see it, because... Oh. 
Well, sometimes I am just the better player. What can I say? All right, well, I'm just gonna go, get ready to go nine. Uh, I'm still gonna be really nervous, but this is like mostly, this is like actually the recipe for a first, right? I've got like crazy augments. Crazy augments, I hit really quickly. Maybe I hit and we barack. Maybe I don't hit low roll and I go eighth and then I play Tekken. Win-win. Once I card this has some Omni Vamp, I feel like it should be pretty easy. Uh, yeah, seven pentakill should be pretty easy to pull off here. Wait, can't I do it right now? Pull off kill? Alright. Uh, imagine a world where there's one more spat. <laughs> imagine a world where there's one more spat on carousel. What does Metal Huds do exactly? Uh, your Pentakill champions are immune to crowd control for the first 12 seconds of combat. Okay, that's ridiculous. Uh, heal 4% of their max health on takedown. Okay, that's also ridiculous. That's like perfect for Pentakill Akali. Okay, still two lives. Any spats? Three spats. Uh, I'm actually take the Lilia. I think hitting a Lilia too matters more than gold for me. We talked about this earlier. She's she. I just like want the two stars so that I have HP on on the board. It actually like looks like a ten penta kill game. Uh, in that case, I might go nine now just to like try to not die before uh, I can see the items. Yeah. I'm just gonna go nine now. Hear my song and dance in the moonlight. Turn all the fever. Oh. <laughs> Going nine now, because I actually don't want to use my last life. There, there, once you're at your last life, there is a chance that each round, you just like low roll and die. I want to guaranteed live to the item round. If I get a chain vest, I'm pretty sure I can just win the game outright here. I'm going to roll for an Akali 2 here. Kiana? Pentacle Kiana seems pretty good. Jaw dropping, I know. Ah, uh, shit. You should need York now. York and a chain vest. Um. I'm probably supposed to sell this Akali. If, if I don't hit, I need to sell this Akali and then uh, move blue buff over. Oh man, I'm getting last stended anyway. All right, well surely it's fine. Oh wait, it's guaranteed chain vest. Okay, I think I just take this. Well, I can get a better chain vest. Oh wait. Uh oh. Okay, just take it. 
Oh my god, I was like, wait, what if I don't get a chain vest? What? What is this? What? Wait, what? Okay, so I should roll for one Yorick. Oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's probably fine. But I was definitely... It's probably fine, but I was definitely supposed to uh, Archangels the Karthus because I lost Super Fan. I'm so... I'm, my heart is pounding right now. I'm so nervous. What is this? I'm sure I'm supposed to play this cane. Yeah. I, I think I sell this Ari for a more fitting unit. I mean, it's 10 pentakill last stand. This should be like a woke first place, right? I'm so nervous because it really just takes one low roll, but if I scout every round and know that nothing can beat me, then I should be fine, which I haven't been doing. I'm too nervous. I'll probably keep donkey rolling. Hear my song and dance in the moonlight. Impatient? I'm not impatient. For now, I'll keep this Ari. Any traps? I think I'm fine. What? Okay. I don't know what that was. Hmm. Yeah, Kane is definitely the end game here. Oh. Well, or Alawi. Yeah, I think Alawi would actually be better. I like Bruiser. Less likely for your team to get unlucky. Kane couldn't randomly get unlucky positioning. Uh, let's get it. If, if you assume that this Archangels goes on Karthus, let's get a Yorick item. I see a Yorick item. Alright. Give me an Alawi. Lots of Karthus players. Karthus 3 is not possible. One Alawi or two Canes. I'm really scared of relying on the Cane. He's like strong in general, but can get unlucky. Give me a Y. I already have. I already have. We are not one soul. We are many. I've never seen a shop so sexy. There's no way I lose this round, right? Before I get this Alawi two. Alawi two Viego two.
Holy shit. Uh, I wonder if I'm ever supposed to sell my Yorick here. If I sell Yorick, I get two Star Viego right now, and then I can move these items to him. Or I could lock twice. Uh, I think I'm actually supposed to sell. Uh, nah. In fact, I'm not even gonna lock. If he doesn't have items... If he doesn't have items, I, I like I'd rather just go for the York. If I, if I had a cane on the board uh, for Edge Lord, then I would probably have buttoned this via go. I, I think York too is is though a game winner. This poor guy is playing Disco. Oh, been there, brother. Yeah, I'm not even gonna lock for this. Eh, I should lock. I should lock. It is plus a thousand HP on my board. Last stand, metal heads, ten pentakill, ninety-nine percent bonus damage, and fifty percent bonus damage reduction, and it hits my whole team. That's insane. Pretty woke game. It's a shame I'm so depressed. Otherwise, this could have been a tuber. Oh, we did exactly what we said we were gonna do. We're gonna just play a risky go first or eighth strat. I got a, I got like a bugged item. I wonder what that was. I got like an abyssal mask, and when I put it on, it didn't do anything. We are not one soul. We are many. Let's do this. Not really much to do. I'm just gonna shuffle around every now and then so that uh, players can't position for me too hard. I feel like there is a tiny chance that some crazy cheese gets me, but like, I'm CC immune, I've got last stand, I got a bunch of HP, I got a bunch of Omni damage reduction. This should be unlosable, like, I'm pretty sure if you walk away from your computer right now, you would probably come back to a first place. But, let's not throw yet. I'm just gonna keep rolling for Yorick. Is anyone close to anything? No. Okay, if no one punishes the corner, I should probably put my Karthus there. Yeah, put my Karthus in the corner. My Karthus bypasses the front line. This should be super free. I just realized that I could have went 10. Because of patient study. The uh, game's definitely ending now. Let's dance. Oh, okay, can I hit the final upgrade? Olaf! Olaf! Dang it. Well, I mean, this is definitely a board. He put his head in front of my Karthus. I'd normally be scared. I was more scared of me fat fingering and putting the Olaf on the board instead of Karthus than like this Zed getting to me. What a game. Pog, I was here, Pog. Yeah, not out of the tournament. 
We went for the woke first or eighth. All I had to do was get last stand and the loose streak augment and then hit two spats and then two chains. And then Karthus headliner in one roll. Oh, the item was a remover? I see. It definitely didn't remove. If I need, or luckily I didn't need the remover, but if I did need it, imagine what would have happened. But yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about last game, like, or before this 10 pentacle game. Like, I hit my Karthus in two rolls, and it was exactly what I needed. Okay, to be fair, my, my spell was kind of flexible. If I hit KDA or RE, I could have also played that. But like, I went loose streak, and then I hit exactly what I needed, and then I never lost again. Did I play well? Like, not really. I didn't scout. I didn't really think about my board. I just, like, said, oh, hey, it's giving me Karthus. Okay, yeah, I'll play either Ari or I'll play Karthus, and then I'll slam a KDA spat or a Pentacle spat based on. And then it's like, okay, wait, now I just got two spats. Okay, now I got two chains. Okay, I hit exactly Karthus, Pentakill. Was it high risk? Yes. Was it high skill? Not really. You lost three times after your roll down, lol. I mean, that's because I stopped rolling, knowing that I had last stand. If I kept rolling to finish out my board without last stand, like, then I would have also won there. But it'd be a huge throw. Why would you continue rolling when you know you could last stand to nine and then hit nine pentakill? Or ten pentakill? Couldn't you argue that towing the line like that as a skill? I mean, yes, it is a skill, but, like, what I'm saying is I didn't... I didn't toe the line well. I didn't really scout. I just like hit and then won. All I did was like be scared the whole time. I don't think my eighth place was a deserved eighth place, and I don't think my first place was a deserved first place, is what I'm saying. And when the game is in a state where like I don't feel like I the the placements I'm getting represent my skill, I feel like it's frustrating. I did not play that well on my first, and I did not play that poorly on my eighth. I definitely played somewhere in the middle, but the wild variance of this current game state gave me the most uh, extreme polar opposite results. And they're both just like, did you hit on your roll down? Did you get the spat? Anyway, uh, enough complaining. It was, it was a satisfying game. Let's leave it at that. I'm happy that I went first. So now that I'm not out of the tournament, we went fifth, eighth, and first, which puts us at one point below par, which is pretty playable. Now I'm gonna go back to just playing for top fours. We'll play the ad break. I'll see you guys in a bit. Oh, wandering trainers. I'm gonna close my chat now. I'll see you guys after the game. Dang it. Definitely do not buy this disco headliner. Okay, I'm actually going to take it. I saw the Archangels and said, it's time. Oh. 
I think I'm gonna pivot out into Karthus though. We'll see. I mean, I, I've top forward with Disco before in this tournament because nobody can test this unit. But like, you basically say try for TF3 or die. Pretty good items. Uh, I like Three's Company here. Give me uh, a set. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to do more of those. Or got here. It's pretty good on him. Actually. This is probably better so that I can make econ. And then this lines up more with like what my build's actually gonna look like. It's a little bit weaker right now though. Urgot is kind of a smurf. Oh, I definitely lost this round because I played the weaker board. No. That's fine. What? I'm definitely not supposed to take a Nami 3 if the game gives it to me. But yeah, okay. I definitely lost that fight because I did not play the Moshers. I, I I was greedy and thought I could make 10 and win. I was thinking my board was good enough, but I, admittedly I didn't scout yet. Also, Morellos is not a good item for Nami. I I think what I'm going to do here is just pivot. Uh, Morellos is super good on many units. If you're not naturally like a Gragas 2 and a Taric 2 and a Nami 2, Disco is probably not worth thinking about. And I could pretty easily uh, still pilot like another line here. It could still just like be a pretty standard pentakill game. Okay, I really need to not hold 7 Namis. What am I doing this? I think you just play good econ here. I don't care about streak. There's no way this board's gonna five streak or four streak. Mm -hmm. And this is my chance to pivot out of Disco. I took it early because I saw the Archangels. But yeah, we saw what happened last time I played Disco. If you're not really high rolling it, it's kind of fucked. Just use this to save HP and then move on, I believe. In which case, let's think about items that are good for what I could be playing here. I uh, my favorite is Ari, because it's like decently strong, but not so strong that she's always contested. Oh, I lost tiebreaker. Oh, well, I actually got like the middle result, which is fine. Yeah, I like Ari personally, so I'm down for a blue buff. And then even if you end up not playing Ari, you can do what I did last game, just slam the blue buff on Akali, and it's still playable. We have a tier. Okay, grab this. Uh, rod. Okay, I could slam Archangels and still play Disco. Oh, it's so bad though. Here's a Lulu. This Lulu and Bard are pretty good. Um, I'm pretty sure I hold the Lulu. 
I was thinking like, what if you leveled and then played everything? But I don't think that's the play. Okay. I'm not gonna slam this yet. Uh, I'm actually down to sell this Nami if I have to. I probably have to, this guy's level five. Uh, I should always have to skip a Lilia. This is actually a pretty tough situation to pilot. I think I'm down to like get off of the line right now. I think this is stronger. Oh, well, I don't know about stronger, but like it sets me up to be stronger later. And like I don't really care if I win or lose this round. Okay, I can just go down like the standard KD8 or Pentakill line. I'm just playing for four fourths anyway. Can we kill one? Can we kill one? Hey, we killed one. Oh, I had to skip a Kale as well. Okay, well, I'm gonna start penciling in the uh, standard. The standard KDA Pentakill line. Am I gonna lose this round? Eighty health, fifty gold is not bad. Mm. Oh, I mean, I did take an econ augment though. Definitely need to take a combat augment next. Uh, I guess we'll let my items help me figure out what I want to play. But like in general, I'm just gonna flex between Karthus, Ar Ari, and Akali. Okay, so what am I gonna do about my items? Archangels is probably the most realistic slime right now. Uh, my problem with Shiv is that it's not good to put the Shiv on Ari. And if you're playing Karthus, you already have a Kale to shred. And Gwinsu's doesn't seem like it's it either, because it's not ideal on Ari or Karthus. It's probably Archangels. It's probably Archangels. But Archangels Ari is kind of awkward. Archangels Karthus is okay, but it's also his... Super fan item. I'm actually not sure what I'm supposed to do here. Maybe my next dogma will be big grab bag and everything solves itself. Oh. Okay, well. I, I don't know what to say other than nice. Alright, well, hopefully all three of my random components just line up perfectly. Wow, all three of my components lined up perfectly. Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I wish I could see my Twitch chat right now. They're probably all talking about my merch. I don't think I need this guy. Yeah. There's actually a bug with Lulu with Blue Buff Nashers. Well, I don't know if it's a bug, but she just like doesn't gain mana uh, for her first auto. It It's probably like not a bug, but like an unfavorable interaction with how the mana lockout works. But I still think it's good to just like slam these items. Did I lose? Oh my god. Whew.
Missing Lilia. Oh man, thought flashbacks to that one Lilia that I skipped earlier. Uh, can I get my Nara tank a little bit more? Something like that. Okay, I'm definitely trying to play Ari here. If I don't play Ari, I could settle. Nasher's Morello's Karthus isn't horrible, if I had to guess. But like, it's just so good on... It, it's so good on Ari. Oh, I might actually win this. Lulu just turns him into a cuddly animal. That was close. He actually, like, QSS'd off or cleansed off the uh, first stun. Uh... Okay, so I should probably not look for Ari item here, because if I get Headliner Ari, she already has her items. It's already me blue with Nashers. More or less can go on um, Seraphina Lulu. Uh, let's get a, just a good tank item, I think. Oh, always the icon. Okay. I'm just gonna grab this belt. Uh, and then we definitely level here. What am I gonna play here? I don't know. Anything? Zach? Oh, yeah, there we go. This looks better. Now we have a shred. Okay, I mean, I think my spot's really good right now. That that item situation was really funny. <laughs> oh. All right, I mean, very simple KDA or Pentacle game. Whew. I think I can end his streak, I'm pretty strong. Oh no, Lulu wasted an ult. That's probably fine. Edge of Night Bard woke. I uh, since I'm not doing anything right now, let's go take a look and see. Like, go take a look and see what's what's being contested right now. I think. Wait, what are you even playing? Uh, Riven? I don't know. Caitlyn, Riven, I'm not sure. 8 bit something. Jinx reroll. Uh, this looks like an Akali game? Even Shroud, Crown Guard? I don't know. This guy's playing Yasuo at true damage. I'm actually like not contested at all. Zero players look like they're going Ari, and like half of a player looks like they're going Karthus. So I'm like, I'm in a great spot. If I win this, I'm in a super good spot. If I win this, I'm gonna level up to 8. Uh, after creeps and roll. Otherwise, I'll wait till 4-2. I feel like I should win this, right? He, he hasn't hit Pantheon 3 yet. And his Jinx doesn't have good items. Turn him into a cuddly animal. Oh, I lose. It's actually like a belt on Nardif. Oh my god! Alright, Albert. Level it up to 8. Get a Karthus or Ari or a Kali. I've had a lot of bad luck so far, and now I feel some good luck coming. It's time. I'm pause champing. Card this or Akali or Ari. Come on. You can get one of them. You can get one of them. You got this. Sona.
What am I missing? I'm, dancing, happy. I'm missing a Lilia for super fan. Man, flashbacks to that one Lilia that I skipped. Okay, honestly, Jewel Lotus makes us I don't need Akali. Okay, I'm gonna just go nine off this. I, th I believe that my comp is good enough. Mm. Let me think about this. I think I... I don't think I slam Gwyn Sue's. Uh, do I want to just slam an item on Karthus? Because I don't expect to hit super fans for a while. How many rod items are playable here? Archangels, Rabadons, Gunblade. Alright, I'm down. Just hit. Since I'm not gonna like roll until nine, I feel like it's good to just like slam this. I didn't slam originally because I was like, oh, maybe I'm gonna keep rolling for a uh, super fan. This should save HP to nine. I got rolled. Not nah, science fine. I'm going nine. Oh, thank god I hit on that roll down. Well, I hit pretty good. Uh, so now you just chill. So if I if I could hit exactly the units I want to hit, what would I change here? Uh, I would drop spell weavers. I would replace replace Lil, um oh, I can't remember your name. Platform woman with uh Lilia for super fan for Karthus. Then you can move the rabbit on to Ari. Uh, then I would replace Echo with Akali. I think that's the play. Oh, and Nar would go in over Olaf. Do I want to sell this Nar? Uh, I think I do actually. Pretty sure there's like an interesting flex board out there. I don't. I don't have to play like the standard. Oh my god. This guy has one HP. I can probably just play like high tier units end game. And just flex my way up. I definitely want tank items. My Karthus, my team's not living long enough for Karthus to be useful. Oh, I'll take the Akali if available. Okay. Let's get like a Gargoyle and Nika or something. My KDA pattern's kind of cramped. I have four units in the back, it's pretty awkward. And my tanks aren't that good. I definitely expect to lose rounds, but hopefully I, hopefully I win like one or two. I'm a little worried. My front line is so bad. But like, if I can make it to nine, I think you just like... Let's start using now to think about it. Like, if you get like that York, Alawi, Zac, or Set, that's in, that looks really strong. Maybe throw in random two stars. Like, just find high, high cost units. I feel like the synergies almost don't matter. Oh my God, we are so clumped for that Israel ult. This is not good. Like, I'm going 9, but if I don't find, like, a good board at 9, I'm probably dead. That's actually pretty nerve-wracking. Maybe I was supposed to keep rolling. Uh... And I, I feel like I stopped rolling at a good time. This board, like, looks good enough. I guess it wasn't, though. I just got rolled three times in a row. This guy's got a Zephyr aimed at my cart this. I really don't like this KDA pattern. I hate that I'm like, I'm so cramped. Time 
But yeah, just find high tier backline. Or high cost backliners. Probably do seven pentakill and then like allow or something. Okay, at least I got one ult off. Ah, oh, fuck. I don't think I can afford to wait one more. Oh, I'm probably supposed to though, because like I, I'll have no money to roll a nine. Wait one more. Go down to like barely two lives. Oh, I'm nervous. It's fine. I'm a man with nothing to lose. If I get eliminated from this tournament, it's fine. That's more time for Tekken. Just do your best. I think I think the objectively correct play is to um wait one. The only reason I wouldn't is because I'm nervous, but Nah, I'll just do it. Do good chad. Wait one. Have like 20 health. Go nine. Roll as much as you can. Try to find like a York Thresh. Every four and five costs front line. Uh, I'm pretty sure I like Gunblade here. Gunblade just seems solid in terms of like, help your team live long. If my Karthus gets one more ult off, I might actually win. Uh oh, dang it. Oh, it's so close. Okay, whatever, 20 health, playable. All right, not much money. Find whatever you can. Oh my god, the Zephyr hit my Blitzcrank. I'm so lucky. Alright, I think it was actually a pretty... Oh wait. Oh, I'm still at 2 out of 3 Spellweaver. Hmm. No, I need, I need that Lilia back. Oh no, one life. I thought I was so strong, but I guess not. Two Karthuses. No, I, I can't from my spot. I need an Akali, that's what I need. What the fuck? Am I dead? My board looks pretty good now. Like, Ari is decent as a standalone unit. You don't really need Spellweaver for her. So now we, we, we phase out the Spellweavers, we have Executioner. Karthus hopefully can do damage now. I don't have the super fans, but it's fine. Well, okay, it's actually not fine, I'm dead. Oh, I went 8th. Wait, okay. I'm actually very confused here, because I thought my board was pretty strong, and I felt like I made reasonable decisions at all points in this game. The only, like, sad thing was I had to do a Nash with Karthus, but, like, it can't be that bad, right? What happened? I had a pretty strong board. My items made sense. Let me think. Was it literally just 7 players high-rolled? The odds of that is so unlikely. Like, pretty sure my board was fine. 
if I rolled, I wasn't going to get much that much stronger unless I rolled down 40 gold. And I feel like going 9 to spike out was the right play. And then I went 9, and then I spiked out, and then I still lost. Hmm. Okay, if this guy has my board, but with a Yorick too, and he's also about to die, it might actually have just been a high roll lobby. I also didn't have an Akali for a while, but I honestly don't think it was that big of a deal because I had Jeweled Lotus. My card list was still always critting. Yeah, I feel like everything we did there was pretty reasonable. I went 8 with good money and a streak. I rolled down, and then I hit what I wanted, and then saved up for 9. I then got some decent losses going to 9, and then I went 9, and then I never won again. It might have actually just been like, you went 9, and then you faced like the 3 strongest players back to back to back, and then game sucks. There's no way my endgame board was that weak, right? My KDA pattern might have also been a bait, because uh, forcing to clump the backline is like a disaster. Man, everyone's one life. It is so sad. Oh, that sucks. Now I have to play for first again to stay alive in the tournament. Alright, I can open my chat now. Can you run the box box bot client? Uh, the box box bot client is running. Alright, I have to go play for a first again next round to stay alive. It's fine. This one, I don't even know what happened. Like, I, I don't think I was unlucky. I think it was literally just like everyone else was hit strong boards because my board was definitely not bad. I had one inefficient item and that was it. And there's no way like the Nashers on Karthus cost me every single fight. Hello, Cesar Lembo. Thanks for the Prime. Alright, I'll play for a first. Or die trying. And then if I lose here, it's pretty whatever. We'll go play more Tekken. Any updates on Chroma Chronicles? Uh, actually, yes. I have to speak to Anthony about it. We're about to have a meeting sometime in the next couple days. I shout out about meeting. But I saw that he sent me an email and I have to go take a look. Yeah, maybe I was supposed to just take the uh, the Akali headliner. I thought my Karthus setup was good enough. But putting... Let me think. If you sell the Karthus and then play the Akali there, you then get 5 KDA, 3 Spellweaver.
No, I don't think it's better. Yeah, I don't think it's better. I actually, I'm pretty sure like you need the Karthus. The Karthus there is really good, especially like with the two star Olaf, uh, linking up with a Lowy. I actually think this was just a very high roll lobby, and I got fucked on my matchups. I don't think my board is weak. Wait, was this game four or five? Okay, for a second I thought it was game five. Okay. Uh, okay, I mean, I'm just gonna go back in the first or eighth mode. I'm just gonna try something really risky. And then, let me do the math. Because of bonus points carrying over from yesterday, I think you need to have 29 points to move on in this tournament. So I went fifth, which gives you four points. Then I went eighth, which gives you one point. Then I went first, which gives you eight points. Then I went eighth. So in the next two games, I have to score a lot of points. Uh, I basically have to go like second and second or first and third. Okay, let me just do that. I did it once by just forcing something and hitting and I can try it again. And then again, if not, then like whatever. At least we save time not having to play day three. Uh, let's see. How long until the next game? Looks like there's no announcement yet, so it's probably gonna be like over 20 minutes.
I'll just play Tekken until they uh, say something. Boxbox, I just started TFT a few days ago. Any advice? Uh, not really. Just play what you like. Have fun. We play video games to have a good time. If at any point it is not a good time, you don't have to play it anymore. If you particularly enjoy a build, you should just play it even if it's like not viable. Asuka Kazama. Kazuyami <laughs> Shiba. Get ready for the next battle. What kind of controller are you using? Uh, I'm using Xbox. I'm definitely not sharp right Get now. Ready for the next battle. My TFT thinking is slow, and so is my Tekken. Maybe my brain's just not on right now. I feel like... I should have been able to identify a better line there. But I also feel like I did the best given what I was given. So I'm not sure. Maybe if I was more awake, I could figure it out. Oh, is that a 1 plus 2? Let's see if he panics. No! He did not panic. Round 2. Fight! Are you gonna play more TFT games? Round yeah, we're waiting for the next round to start. Fight. It's like 20 minutes though. Because our, our game ended really early. So it's a lot of time for Tekken. Okay, I need to block that. I can parry it. I'm fast. Dive. I don't even know if that's a mid or a low. Okay, wait. Hang on. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's over now. I ducked. Final round. What about a parry off rip? Get rotated, idiot. No. You lose. I failed to block the low hit. All right, I need to be sharp enough to uh, block those. It, it's definitely reactable. He like takes his time his time one. to like swing low. Fight. And the animation's very recognizable. <laughs> the 
This guy's a blower. He likes to blow his Rage Heart immediately. Or sorry, not Rage Heart. Uh, Heat Art. I keep on getting this two mixed up. Frame traps? Nope. No, 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 no frame trap for me. Let's do a shorter combo. Down! Oh no! He got me. Bonk! Bonk! I just got back, Tekken. Yeah, we're, we're just waiting for the next TFT game to start. Uh, it shouldn't be too much longer. Like, 10 more minutes, maybe? Oh shit, I'm playing on autopilot. Uh, think. Use my brain. Frame trap. No! I gotta stop doing these slow low moves. Okay, calm down, calm down. It's fine. No matter what the health bar says, it's fine. Round four. Fight. Noise. You win. Uh, change the music. I need to feel a little angry. Alright, come on, Albert. If you are fast as fuck, you will parry these lows. You will parry these lows. 50 50. Oh shit. 1 plus 2. Oh no, am I dead? No, is it time for dead? It's dead. Oh, wait, he missed! What if he panics? Okay, he didn't panic, it's fine, it's fine. Watch this! Round <laughs> two. Fight! Perry! I'm gonna hit him with a frame trap. I am not going to hit him with it with anything. Round three. Fight. That was punishable for sure. I swear to God, I'm going to react to that if it's the last thing I do. I didn't press one plus two. It's not over yet. Grab, 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 grab. Sweet. Oh. 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 Final round. Fight. 
I swear I will react to that. Grab. I swear I will. I swear. I didn't react to it. No, I could have won right there with a rage art. No. Damn it. I failed to react to it. That move is in the tier pretty fast, but it's definitely reactable. Like this move. If you're looking for it, it's definitely reactable. I just failed so many times. If they do a good job keeping the pressure up and making you scared to block low, it's really hard to like block low specifically for that, but I failed. Get ready for the next battle. This still isn't TFT. Bro, how many times do I have to say it? I said it like every three minutes for the last 20 minutes. Here, let me go put up some disclaimer text. Okay, for people without ears. Round Waiting one. for the next match to start. Fight. Okay? Wait, can you crouch grab in this game? No. No. Not like this. How do I manage to lose every single time when he's at one health? Do you have a chance to test the Riot fighting game? No, I did not. Round one. Fight. All right, I'm gonna get my LP back right here, baby. Round two, fight. Round 
three. Fight. <laughs> 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 Wait, I was guarding the whole time. What happened? Oh my god, classic bonehead. Oh, I broke my card? Wait, so what am I supposed to do against a guard break? Round four. I bet a back couple works right here. Twice in a row. Oh, you have to duck under it. Okay. Oh. Am I dead? I might be dead. Final round. Fight. Oops. Okay, I pressed one there. I'm guessing it's a one plus two. He's a blower. I'm back. Alright. That character is really hot. Yeah, I find Jack 8 to be unusually sexy, but I feel like Asuka is still pretty cute. Fight. One plus two. Come on, Albert. One plus two. Oh, wait, I think I did get out of that grab, actually. Oh, this is this is not it. Oh. Round two. Fight. Under. Don't let it end like this, Albert. He's dr drilling me against the wall. Oh no, I'm getting railed against the wall again. No, make it stop, make it stop. Please, make it stop. Make the pain go away. What the? It looks like he just came. Get ready for the next battle. Get ready for the next. Ah! The queue time's mostly pretty long. I I'm told that a lobby started late, Round so the, the we're like fight. waiting for like one of the slower lobbies to finish.
Calm down. It's gonna be okay, Albert. It's gonna be okay. It's not okay! I seriously can't tell which button you're supposed to press. I know you're supposed to like look at their hands, but it all happens too fast. Oh shit. Horrifying grab. Round three. Fight. I'm gonna frame trap his ass. Frame trap. Frame trap. Frame trap. Frame trap. Frame trap. Frame trap. Ah, it's not working. Definitely not a one. Hello, ah! Marcelo. Final round. Back clip off rip. I keep pressing one. Okay. It is not over yet. This isn't copium. I can still come back by running up, grabbing, and then grabbing. Ah! You lose. Oh, he left. All right, let's go check on the status of the games. Uh, the only update was 25 minutes ago. They said there'll be a 15 minute break. Okay. Uh, okay. Any new updates? Get ready for the next battle. What did you get last game? Oh, I got fucked. I went eighth. It was a really sad eighth. It was an eighth where I was pretty strong and six players were all one life. I was the only one that died. Get ready for the like next that eighth battle. could have been a sixth if I survived one more fight and it could have been a fourth if I survived two more fights. Round one, fight. But again, it's fine. If I lose, if I drop out of the tournament, it's second time. Oops. I'm really bad at figuring out what to do when they're like too close against the wall and you don't get to do your standard combo. When will the next match start? Uh, they're not updating us, but if I had to guess, it's probably 10 minutes from now. Oh, 
Oh wait, this is that character that has the, the low sweep that I need to react to. Not unlosable. Wait, it's... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna run at him, and then he's gonna blow his Rage Art. Because that's what I would do if Asuka ran at me. He didn't blow! He didn't blow! He kept his cool! Well, fuck you! For end your cool! Round four. Fight. <laughs> Okay. Shorter combo. I'm gonna do a, a, a down one plus two and then down one plus two. True combo, baby. You win. Oh, we are so back. One. You win so many game stemming lows. Fight. Yeah, nobody blocks lows very often. Well, I mean, you're not supposed to block lows. It's like a mistake to block low. Because uh, most lows are slow and reactable. Or they're fast and the damage is not significant enough for you to worry about it. Because if you get hit by a medium... The mediums do like a fuck ton of damage. If you hit by like a solid medium, you lose like 40% of your health. If you hit by a low, you lose like 8% of your health. Nice, I faked him out. I still can't react to grabs. Oh, hey, they said the lobby finished, and now it's just a five minute delay. It is amazing how often that frame trap works. This one right here? Oh. Oops. Don't worry, Albert. You can 3 0 this guy. Demote this guy to Gary you. You can 3-1 this guy. Round Blast the music. Get angry. Fight. Get mad. Frame trap. Oh. He's careful. Frame trap. Oh no! Um, relax. Relax. It's fine. You win. Yes, suck it, arrow. Now ramen miso soup, I'm coming for you. Get ready for the next battle. Yeah, this guy probably loved the Jin versus Kazuya matchup. How many of you guys watched my stream yesterday when I played through the entire storyline? I mean, to be fair, it was only like three hours long. What a great time, actually. A cinematic masterpiece that storyline was. Wait, I think we're starting the next match. Oh yeah, okay. We're, we're starting the next match. 
Yeah, my favorite part where was where they had to where the ninja came in. He's like, I'll show them some ninjutsu, and then they're like, the enemies are like, what? They've got a ninja in their ranks? What? A ninja? And it's like really like bad voice acting. My second favorite part was the part where Kazuya and uh, Jin fought each other. If you guys weren't there for it, uh, if you weren't there for it, I think over 60% of the storyline of the four hours was just Kazuya and Jin fighting again. All right, we should be starting. So, Boxbox talks mad shit about Tekken for someone putting in a hundred hours a week. Wait, I don't think I'm talking shit. You you think me calling the voice acting bad is like an insult? I I think it's almost better than if they had good voice acting. Yeah, I I talk very highly of Tekken. I think it is a great game. The storyline was very cheesy and charming. And I enjoyed it a lot. I'm not talking shit at all. Oh, let me see how my friends are doing in the tournament. Okay, so I'm in a pretty bad spot. I have to basically go like first and second or first and third. I think first and third puts me in a tiebreaker. And then uh Yeah, first and second or first and third puts me in a tiebreaker to move on. First and second moves on for sure. So like I'm basically playing for second and that's it. Like anything else I'm like I I give up. So let's take a look at the tournament. Um, let's see. Two of my friends are in this, and they all—they both made it today too. Uh, one of them is at seven points. Uh oh. Another one. Wait, this guy went eight, eight, eight. How is that possible? Wait, what? Wait. Wait, we're playing in the tournament realm? Wait, we had to like install the tournament realm to play on it, and they're like, yeah, we're actually not going to use it, we're actually going to play in NA. And now we're going back? Alright, well hopefully I'm still logged in, because I don't remember my tournament realm info. Wait, I don't think the scores are fully updated yet. I'm definitely not supposed to be this close to uh to qualifying. I'm definitely like very far behind. Cause I just went eighth. I think they're like one game behind. Yeah, I think they're one game behind.
on my score sheet, 32nd place has 19 points. Okay, so then... Yeah, that sounds about right. I have to, like, make up for five points of deficit. Oh, here we go. Okay, so... Yeah, I have to... Basically, just go first and second. Okay. Wait. Did my tournament client not load? Wait. What's going on? Hello? Maybe task manager. End task. End task. Are you guys actually on the tournament realm? Uh, I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm looking at like the the tournament group chat, and they're saying that someone's power went out, and they have to disqualify. They're being disqualified for it, uh, or more like they can't reconnect. And in a tournament, you can't play like a seven man lobby, so we have to go to tournament realm because you can play a seven man lobby in tournament realm. But, I mean, I don't know what's going on here. My tournament client is not loading. <laughs> it doesn't even, like, open. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so it, it starts a riot client right here. But, hmm. End task again. I really hope I don't have to restart my PC. Let me, yeah, close everything related to Riot. Vanguard, train notification. Wait, I have TeamViewer installed? That's kind of scary. Hope no one's trying to take control of my PC. Okay, I actually don't even know what to do. I close everything. Oh, what? Okay, just keep clicking on it, I guess. Okay, honestly, if there was ever a chance for me to make a miracle comeback, it's probably this lobby. Because uh, if you look at the standings, it doesn't matter how well you do as long as you make it into the top half. So Kiyun is in my lobby, and he literally like can't fail. He can go 8-8, eight, eight, and he's fine. Also, what the hell? He's How is he 33 points? He's actually a beast. So, 
Kiyun is over here. And uh, he, like, probably doesn't care anymore. I mean, he might just, like, play well anyway, because he probably, like, wants to be, say, like, he made it to number one. But, like, the pressure's off for him. A guy DQ'd in my lobby. So, if there was ever a, a round where I could go one and two, like, this would be it. Uh, who else is in my lobby? Let me see. NCTN. Where is NCTN? Right here? Okay, this guy definitely still wants to win. Adrixen TFT. Where's Adrixen TFT? Oh, oh, right here. He also wants to win. Void Sin. Oh, he also wants to win. Lab O O O D K. Okay. Uh, and then this guy like only has six points. He's definitely out. Oh man. Okay, never mind. There are definitely a lot of players that are still gonna try really hard. Don't diss Shao Dian Dian. I mean, I'm not dissing him. I'm commenting on the state, the fact that like. He only has six points, so he's not going to be able to uh, qualify no matter what. What we're looking for is like, I'm counting how many players like already have their fates locked in. And it's two or three out of eight. Because one guy's DQ'd, another guy's going to make it no matter what, and another guy is not going to make it no matter what. So it might be like a less tryhard lobby than normal. Can we qualify? Uh, we have to place well above average. We're, there's two games left. I have to go like first and second or first and third or second, second. No, second, second probably loses no matter what. Because uh, second, second would put me at 28 points, which might tie for 30 second. But it would lose tiebreakers because um, tiebreakers are determined by number of firsts. So I think it needs to be first and third. First and third for tiebreaker, uh, first and second to move on, guaranteed. It's hard to figure out exactly how many points. Uh, yesterday, with the same scoring system, you needed 28 points to tie. Uh, but today, uh, some people carried over bonus points from the previous round, so I think the average points is going to be a little bit higher. Oh, hello, Emily Wang. Oh my god. Dude. Okay. <laughs> they just said go back to live servers. <laughs> okay, so to recap what just happened. Uh, one of our players in the final lobby, his power went out. And then the admins are like, okay, well, uh, since you can't do an eight-man lobby on NA. I, since you can't do an eight-man lobby on NA, I, everyone go back to tournament realm. And the one guy's like, wait. But I uninstalled my Tournament Realm just now. <laughs> so then they're like, ah, shit. And they're like, how long will it take you to download it? And he's like, I'm trying right now. I think it'll be 30 minutes. And then they're like, ah, okay, we'll talk to Riot. And then Riot says, just go have some, some guy log in, take this, the last spot in the lobby, and then forfeit. And play zero units. Which is super <laughs> troll, because... Imagine you like have an econ opener with like what doesn't kill you or rich get richer and you have to play for lose streak and you just face the admin that's logged in and not playing not doing anything. Alright, it's fine. I'm I'm ready for Tekken. What scores do you need? Uh, I need to go first and third to tie, or first and second to guaranteed move on. It, it's, it's like mostly doomed. I'm just gonna like, go full Gamba. Uh, try something crazy. Like, I'm, I'm instantly clicking Cursed Crown. I, I will always take the highest risk, high reward strat.
in their defense, it is hard to manage a tournament with this many players. I don't understand what happened to make us not use Tournament Realm in the first place. They, like, made a big deal about, like, everybody setting it up the night before. And, like, logging into their accounts and testing it and doing your settings. And then, after the first game, they're like, actually, let's use NA. There must have been, like, some crazy issue for them to, like, pivot. On the bright side, Tekken's really fun. I've been really enjoying it. I, I could see myself grinding it out for... Until set 11. Do you think you make it past the red ranks? Uh, I definitely feel like I'm being knowledge checked. I don't mind losing to a mind game, but I get really annoyed when I lose to a knowledge check, where it's just like, oh, you didn't know that this character does this thing. So then you like, you can't even begin to think about what you're supposed to do. I'm pretty sure if you had like perfect knowledge of how Tekken worked and how all the characters work, then like everything's like reaction time and coin flips. Or like, I don't know if I'd call it coin flips, it's more like guessing games. Because it's not, like, literally a 50-50. You can definitely, like, read people. Uh, but, like, I don't even feel like I'm getting to play the mind game because I don't really know how the character works. So I feel like the next step involves learning how all 32 characters work. I know how my character works. And that was good enough for red rank. But I definitely think I need to, like, understand what my opponents are thinking. All right, I'm gonna play the ad break. I'll see you guys. We're just gonna go full Gamba. Hello, Mr. Steele. Thanks for the seven months. Oh, I gotta close my chat. I forgot.
Prismatic Symphony. All right, it is time to gamble. Oh, I've actually played a good amount of this. Oh, I'm not sure if this is the kind of build that can go first, though. But I do like it. Maybe I'll just high roll really hard. What does it take? I think I should hang on to this Samira. I have an Infinity Edge. Uh... Oh, I kind of want to do Living Forge and see if I can get Collector. Pumping up is also solid. It's not cybernetic. Living Forge is interesting. No, I think Pumping up is better. Oh, if I'm playing for our first, Twin Terror is also really good. But if I'm playing for our first, I'm pretty sure it's always this. Music brings us um, that's worth fighting for. Let's see. <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> I'm stupid. I leveled and I don't have the money. Okay, luckily I faced a weak player. Um, okay, so I was I was originally thinking of playing the Jinx, but then I realized now that you can't actually play Jinx. If you take Cursed Crown, you need to play Tempo. So I realized like, oh, you can't actually try for three star here. Just play the two star as a means to Tempo and then figure something out. I have an Infinity Edge, so it's probably gonna be something along the lines of Flex AD. Okay, I say that, but I just got Gregus. Uh, definitely play this Lulu. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too attached to rapid fire. Let me think about this. Does this have to be an AD game? It like technically doesn't. No, but I should probably slam this. All right, we're just gonna play for like a massive win streak. You can't lose streak because we're in like a seven man lobby. Um, this is playable. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm a little sad that I slammed this IE, but I only have myself to blame. Uh. Oh. I'm pretty sure you just IE this guy. Okay, so who's not useful now? Uh, this cannon's not very useful. Yeah, what? Okay, what am I doing? 
My brain is definitely slow. Why did I slam a bell on this Olaf? I definitely didn't need to. Okay, anyway. Uh, if we're playing AD... Even Shroud may- oh, no, no Even Shroud. Uh, the best flex item here is definitely this... Sunfire. Let me think about this. So, I've slammed an IE. Which means, at some point, I need to run... One of certain units. Okay, I'm pretty sure you don't run Lulu here. Is there anybody that's very strong? No. I'm not gonna run the Lulu so I can make Econ here. Uh, okay, so I've slowed an IE, so I need to make a unit that can actually take the IE. So, I mean, you don't have to, but you probably should. So, one of these guys. That leaves my options still pretty open. Let me hold these guys, this guy. Maybe I just like go for like the end game, like Caitlyn or Ezreal, and then level nine, Alawi, Set, York, Thresh, and then you probably actually want Jazz because you can hold so many units. Uh, do I need to level here? I think I should just to be safe. If I lose this round, the game's like instantly over. And then find out the best unit to play here. Alright, no, it's definitely rapid fire. Like that. Mm. Is this Corky worth holding? I think I'd rather hold the Mordekaiser and the Viper. I think mid game, this Jax will be pretty good, even though I use like kind of an awkward item. Twin Terror Twitch. That's like kind of scary. But it's fine. I'm a man with nothing to lose. Let me just go, uh. Let me just go all in here. Heart Steel. Yeah, I, I think this is what could get you a first. I'm down. I'm down. He also takes the IE pretty well. Put Punk in for one round. Uh, let's see. Maybe Ezreal then. Yeah, I mean, seems like a pretty good path forward. Uh, pretty sure I do not need to level here. Leveling here is too costly. How should I proceed? Okay, so what do we got here? Don't really need this Vi anymore. I'm not going to slam the item for true damage yet. I have a remover, but there's a pretty good chance it's going to be a blue buff. Dude, I'm so stupid. I have to pee really badly. And there was like a 30 minute break, and I didn't go before uh, the game started. Mm, most likely not playing Kale. Don't think you need to worry about her. Probably a generic flex AD game. Uh, it's definitely not Tiniest Titan. Wait. It could be Determined Investors. It's not Final Ascension. Oh! Uh, I like Roll the Dice a lot here. Roll the Dice is good if you have... Okay, wait. It's really good on my Akali right now. But also, Talon Search is in general very good. Oh. 
Sorry, I, I shouldn't say in general very good. But it's like a generic buff for your whole team. I, I still think it's roll the dice. I could be wrong. I could be wrong on this. But I think roll the dice and then a cop makes a lot of sense here. It's actually really nice that I didn't slam the tier then. Akali is exactly the kind of unit that uses this Rascal's Gloves really well. I almost lost. the jazz okay after i get my next cash out i should probably sell this aphelios oh this guy is cursed crown twin terror oh no wait he's in a, he, he's like another guy in the lobby who has nothing to lose oh no final reserves i have to hope keen does not pull it off oh fuck i'm facing twin terror curse crown okay at least my collie rolled good items here if i lose here it's gonna be really 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 doomed HP loss aside, I need the streak. Oh no, I think I definitely lose. Oh, he kind of hit the god combo. It's okay. Heart steal loss. Yeah, the HP loss is not what scares me. It's the fact that he's level 6, 0 gold, cursed crown, twin terror, to end my streak. Well, he didn't do it literally to end my streak, but... Being the cursed crown player, I basically have to play for the streak or else it's doomed. It's okay, Albert. Oh, hey, I get third pick, actually, because of that loss. Uh, I'm pretty sure I want tier here. And you're you're almost always locking onto Ezreal and Jin endgame. Okay, this is a horrifying game, because there's two players here that are very terrifying to me. Kiyun taking final reserves March of Progress is an interesting combination that could lead to a first or an eighth. Um, I'm pretty sure you just blew off the Aphilios and then you just like move it to Ezreal when it's time. I like it here. I just might stay. Okay, we're probably not thinking about Gragas anymore. Okay, I really need to come up with the god tier level 8 board. Wait, what? Wait, are there two players? Oh. Wait, I they both locked in the same augment. I didn't even realize that they were different players. But there are two players that are playing twin, twin terror twitch. Oh, thank god. Wait, that's actually really good for me. I think I lost. Okay, fuck. This, this twin terror thing's got hands. Okay, this is scary. I mean, this is exactly the kind of game that we need, though, to attempt at first. This guy rolled down a zero. Oh, I see why he rolled down a zero. He rolled down a zero because it's contested. Hopefully, these two guys stalemate each other. All right, well, I just need to chill for one round and then attempt the big play. Oh, I'm so poor, though. Do I really have the money to attempt the big play? I basically like go eight, roll once, and then just take whatever I get, and then pray it's good enough. Or I gamble, go seven, and just pray that I'm gonna win one round. Gamble and pray. Uh, 
Uh, I'll take this for now. Okay, I'm gonna keep this set. I believe that he'll be useful. I'm just gonna do this. Get ready to sell stuff off. You don't need the bard until level 9. I... Uh, yeah, I think I do have to sack one. Oh, that's so scary. I believe I'm getting another headliner next round, though. Oh, not a good one, though. I... Uh, oh, hey. Oh, wait, no. Red buff's actually not that good here, because you already have a Sunfire. I mean, I could still slam it. I'm down to slam this. I've been liking Gargoyle recently. I probably just wait. Oh, red buff and Sunfire. Yeah, it's definitely... It's definitely, like, kind of a waste. Oh, wait. I just realized. Um, this set doesn't do anything for me. I was just putting him there for a set. Oh, God. I'm just gonna slam it. It's not the worst thing ever. Okay, I'm barely... Even with sacking one, I'm barely gonna have any money. I basically need to, like, hit Ezreal almost immediately. I need to hit Ezreal or Jin, please. Ezreal or Jin. I think Akali or Ari are also playable. Alright, come on, Albert. But Ez Ezreal Headliner is by far the best one. I'll mark him in my team planner for good luck. I don't have enough money for this. Uh, it's probably Jeweled Lotus for, like, a- I just, like, want global buffs. Uh, I don't believe it's that. I think it's Jeweled Lotus. Alright, come on, Albert. I feel like this Zed is good enough. I mean, like, I- I, I have no money, right? So, like... Uh... What could this combo mean? I think it's one of those I play him for a little bit and then sell him. Probably slam the chain vest. I'm probably like almost always slamming like an edge of night here if I can. I've seen people do like Ari Z or Caitlyn Z or Ezreal Z, and it's like you have one melee carry, one uh, ranged carry. It doesn't seem too bad, and then it also links together with Zach and then Alawi. I want to buy this Poppy, but I don't think it's worth selling any of these. Actually, I probably should not put the chain vest on, because what if I get super fan? Um, do I need to roll here? I think I do. Oh, here's Zach. Uh, what do I want to do here? Maybe drop two sentinels? Fuck, hard to position. Oh god. <laughs> it's not even close. I'm probably fucked. This- he doesn't even have 3 star, but I, I can't do anything to it. It's too strong. Oh hey, Kiyun failed his final reserve. Oh, he also got to interred. <laughs> Alright. This Zed is not it. This Zed is not it. I definitely need to try again. Oh, that Jin. That Jin is it. That Jin instead of this Kaisa. Uh oh, okay, maybe this bat. No. No, I'm so sad. Okay, I'm pretty sure this that is not it. I I can do better. Oh, 
Oh, it's not that I'm sure I, it's not that I'm, it's not that I think I can do better, it's that I think I have to do better or else I'm screwed. Uh, I don't think this card, this is it. Uh, please, I'm begging you. Oh no. I'm probably dead here. Maybe I'll supposed to just keep the cart this. Come on, do something, team. I paused because I saw the Caitlyn. I was like, oh my god, what if I hit Caitlyn headliner here? And the crowd goes poggers. Okay, wait, I'm alive. I'm alive. I get one more chance. Alright, find the perfect headliner. And in case you're wondering, the perfect headliner. I don't even think you take that. I need money. Uh, fuck. Oh god. <laughs> oh god, I need a I need a literal miracle. We went for we went full gamba and we didn't get it. We didn't hit the Ezreal. I said, sorry Zed, it's not good enough. Yeah, it's not close. I tried my best. Actually not really. My brain was pretty slow. But thankfully, looking at these shops and looking at how these augments played out, I don't think there was a chance of winning. So I don't feel too bad. I'm pretty sure Cursed Crown is always the correct play here if you have to get a first to move on in the tournament. It just sucks that I got owned by Twin Terror twice. Oh, we got owned by Twin Terror twice and then we also didn't hit. Although, to be honest, I don't even think Ezreal beats this. If you want to beat this, you need something that like can destroy um, a strong single target, which would probably be like Ari. But we didn't see that either. I was considering Ari Akali, but we did not hit that. It's fine. I'm not too phased by it. Alright. Hello, everybody. I am 100% out of the tournament because I did not top two that. I tried my hardest. Bra, ain't no way Curse Crown 201 is Biss. I refuse to believe it. I, I am sorry. If you don't understand why we take Curse Crown there, I have no words for you. I, I even explained it. I, I think I did a really good job of explaining my thoughts this entire game. I normally, you normally should not take Curse Crown. It's very risky. I need to get a first, or I'm eliminated from the tournament. Therefore, I should take the risky play. Is, is that? So hard to understand. Like it, it didn't, it didn't pan out. But like, what did you want me to do? Play normally, play for a top four, get third, and then get be out of the tournament. Was this game top fourable? Oh, absolutely. If I played safe and normal, right? Like play a decent board, get a fourth, lose to the high rollers. But like, what's the point of that? This isn't ranked. A fourth place eliminates you from the tournament. You should always you should always make the risky first place play there. It didn't work out. I didn't hit the correct headliner, but it's fine. I honestly don't even think with the headliner I could win. It's triple prismatic. If some people high roll it, you can't really do anything. Why isn't it hedge fund there so that you can build a board? If you take hedge fund there, you always lose. There is no board you can build in the 40 gold hedge fund gives you that wins you the game. This is under the assumption that your opponents are good at the game. If I take hedge fund there, and I hit the Ezreal, and I hit two stars, you lose the game still. Hedge fund is for if you have 100 HP, and you are down to go to 100 gold, and then trade your HP for a lot of money. If you take hedge fund and then immediately spend it, you're throwing the game. 
it is always better to just take a combat augment and then just like hope that you hit in what isn't that much gold. Like I didn't have that much gold, but you always take a combat augment there and then just like hope that you hit so you can actually win when you hit. If you take hedge fund and roll, you have a higher chance of hitting and then you lose anyway. Is Ezreal that broken? No, he's he's a good carry, but he's not broken. The reason why I uh, played it was because, or the reason why I wanted it was because I had Heart Steel set up and I had Blue Buff IE. So it's like Ezreal is the most desirable carry there and Jin. Uh, besides that, you would maybe do Ari with Blue Buff and then Akali with IE. But your my Akali already had uh, Rascal's gloves, so like it was doomed on that front. But yeah, if you take Hedge Fund, you always lose there. Box Box, I wish you didn't give up after the game to 8th. What are you talking about? Did I give up? No, I, I'm like mentally checked out, but I still played my best. Me being mentally checked out is not because of my state of the tournament. Me being mentally checked out is because I don't really like the game right now. I don't think that is so hard to understand. Like, I still tried my best. I still identified my angles and played it and scouted and then did my math. I I won on the... I went, I went first following my... Eight, like, the eighth place where you said I gave up. I went first place the next game. I identified that I had to play for a win, took a really risky augment, I hit, and then I won. Then the following game, I got owned, and then this game, I needed to play for a first again. I identified my angle, and then I didn't hit this time. Like, I I think everything I've done here was very reasonable, and I'm really surprised that people are saying stuff like that. I'm new to TFT, why do you hate this set? I don't hate this set. I just am burned out. I've played too much. It's not objectively a bad set. I'm personally just bored of it. This will happen. There are many, many, many good games out there that if you play it for 700 hours in three months, you'll get bored of it. Can you forfeit the next game? No, you're not allowed to. I still have to play it out. Box Box, what is the point of playing safe if failing means going eighth? I am so shocked that this is so hard to explain. If I go fourth, it is the same thing as going eighth in the context of the tournament. If I go third, it is almost the same thing as going eighth. Only a second or a first give me a chance of moving on to the next day. So if there was a strategy that coin flips first or eighth, that is actually desirable because a standard play does not have a high chance of going first. I don't mean right now, but in general. Uh, then it's just like your level of risk tolerance and your perceived confidence of your ability to pilot the line. Like, the game isn't literally like, oh, you're going to get fourth here if you make this decision. The game is just like, sometimes you get angles to make risky first place attempts. And it's up to you to identify if the odds of pulling that off are worth it. It's not literally... Cursed Crown has a 50% chance of going first and 50% chance of going eighth. It is like a, it tends to go first or eighth because like either you build a strong board or unbeatable and you streak really hard or you uh, fail to build a strong board and then you lose in like two matchups to strong players. It is up to you to evaluate your position and then figure out if it's worth that risk. Good players can identify a first or eighth being slightly in their favor. If you were in an okay spot and then you were offered an augment that said, hey, 60% chance of going first, 40% chance of going eighth, 
you would probably take it every single time if you thought you're you were like doing in the middle of the pack of that game. But if you were if you were like 100 streaking, level eight 50 gold on stage four one, and the game was like, hey, take this augment that gives you a 60% chance of going first, 40% chance of going eighth. You probably wouldn't take it because you think your average placement is higher than that. So to answer your question, it just comes down to like, how strong do you think your spot is for this angle? And then, I mean, that's just how augment selections are done in general. Unfortunately, I don't often think that that decision matters very much. I think uh, almost every single time there will be like, usually one optimal augment choice, and it's like pretty obvious. Uh, in this game, there was actually like multiple choices. I could have taken um, Talent Search, which like makes your team in general stronger. Or I could take uh, the Rascal's Gloves, where if I hit the two-star Akali, it's a very strong second carry. I Talent Search is a little bit stronger than normal here because Cursed Crown makes it hit more units. So maybe it was worth doing. In the end, it didn't matter because I didn't hit a board. So I don't have to sweat it too much. Do you like the state of the meta right now? It feels like there's a lot of variety. I, uh, I mean, it's okay. I think the balance was atrocious. Then it was pretty bad, and now it's slightly bad. But like, the balance in TFT has always been pretty off. Like, I say the balance is bad, but there really isn't that much you can do about it, other than like, be perfect at balancing. If you buff a unit, there was a, a time in set seven where they buffed a unit by like five damage. I think it was three actually. Like, they went from, like, 77 damage to 80, and it made them from, like, unplayable to, like, incredibly overpowered. So, like, we complain about balance, but it is actually very hard to get it right. Boxbox, Box, thanks for the explanation. Now I know if I have little LP, I should play more risky because of the safety net of the zero LP. That is literally not what I said at all, and is not even close, and it's not even true that safety net is fake, MMR is hidden behind the scenes, LP doesn't matter. You know that if you are at 1 LP Diamond 4 and you go 8th, it says you lose 1 LP, but you actually still lose like 50 LP. The game just takes it away from you later. MMR is like what determines like your actual rank and who you get matched against. Box box, I don't believe you. I mean, you can easily ask Mort Dog one time and he'll tell you. Uh, or you could like look at like the tons of data that back it up. Did you know you can lose MMR on a fourth? Like you gain 10 LP, but you're actually losing rank. This happens at the very high echelons of the ladder. There was a time when Dish Soap was 2000 LP rank one, and he would go fourth, 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 and he would gain plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, but he was actually losing MMR the whole time because going fourth in a lobby of uh, players 1500 LP lower than you is not a good result. So the system thinks you're bad or not playing to your level and it deducts MMR. This was then evidenced because the next time he went 5th, he lost 40 LP. The system, the, the LP system is like fake to like visually make you think like you're safe. It's to like make you feel good about like hitting achievements because if you didn't have like the safety net, then the moment you hit diamond four, and it's like a big achievement, you wouldn't want to play anymore because one game would immediately demote you. So they want to like make it look like you can play safely. So like I, I can't believe that's the message that that guy got from me explaining high risk, high reward. Didn't you have to pee? Yeah, but I was really upset about what that guy said. So I spent my two minute break between games refuting it rather than going and now it's too late I, w I was like so shocked that i took the effort to explain how like to gauge like high risk high reward situations and then he's like yeah so i'll play i'll do a high risk high reward if i get one if i'm at one lp 
All right, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom. I'm gonna play the ad break. I'll see you guys in a bit. If you finish first, is there a chance of going to day three? No, I had to place first in the, that game just now to have a chance, or top two. Disco. All right, I made up my mind. I'm going to simply get first place. End it on a bang. I think this will very likely be the last game of TFT I play for a long time, so I'm down to like end on a banger. This might just be a make 20. Uh, no, I, I should play units. Yeah, I think after this, I'm gonna play a lot of Tekken, which is kind of exciting. It's new and shiny. And then we'll be back for set 11 and see if it's good. Uh, Hodge, Infinity Edge.
One, two, three, four, five. Seventeen gold. Um No real direction yet. That's Jazz baby. That's kinda woke. I'm like kinda down. I think it's funny. It also like might like make a bang. Yeah, I'm down. Uh, in that case, I should just try to make um, try to make econ boom. Okay, and then. Is it even worth doing my roll here? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure next round I can make 40 or 30. Wait. Oh no, I'm actually barely not gonna be able to make 30. I guess do my, my punk roll here and try to get a, see if I get another bard. Here's like Kaisa, but I can't afford it. Okay, so it's been a while since I played a That's Jazz Baby game, but I believe it's boom, boom, boom. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. And then, that's basically it. And then, let me go look up what you're supposed to play on Bard. Bard, three star, that's Jazz Baby. The most commonly played items are Adaptive Helm. Uh, that's because that's his super fan item. And then Shojin, Jeweled Gauntlet. Apparently, blue buff is the shit. Okay. So, looking at the data, if you're given the choice between Shojin and blue buff, you should always choose blue buff. That makes sense because of how Adaptive Helm works. Adaptive Helm makes his mana cost like really awkward. So, I believe the best in slot's probably gonna be like JG, blue buff, and then the built in Adaptive Helm. Okay, this is definitely gonna be like a. Wait, I forgot that this is a seven man lobby, so I can't even open fort because I might face this guy. I forgot that somebody forfeited, so we're playing. Or, to his credit, his power went out. He didn't. He didn't leave. But somebody like couldn't play anymore, so now we have an like a an admin in the lobby who's not buying any units, and then he said he's gonna forfeit immediately. But, like if I face him here, I or like even worse, like right here, it's really bad for me. I should like pray that I don't face him, because there's no way I'm gonna do anything until, uh, there's no way I can do anything until level six. Okay, I need to grab either a rod or a tier rod because MF needs a Gwinsu's and Bard needs a JG, and then tier, tier otherwise. Wait, is there a spat play? There's no jazz spat anymore. It's a country spat now, so you can't... Yeah, I was like, look at... It's a Nico with a spat. But, like, the closest thing I can think of is you play KDA spat and then you drop something. Maybe I should have just taken it and, like, try to figure it out. Oh. Dazzler bard, though. But, I mean, I, there's no way I'm saying no to this, right? Ah, is there a spat play? You do. You'd make a KDA spat and then drop the Kaisa for something else. But like, it's hard to find a more synergistic unit. She fits in so perfectly, and she's a two cost. Dazzler Bard is probably fine. You just like don't play a Dazzler at level eight. Ah oh, man, it sucks that they removed Jazz, but 
a, a spat right there would have just been like instant first place. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. You could still miss on your roll down. Okay, this is that moment. I swear to God, if I face the admin, I swear to God, I'm gonna be so sad. It's a one in three chance of facing him. Please. Okay, thank God, thank God. Okay. There's no way I win this, right? Okay. I was like, maybe I don't even want to slam this JG. Oh wait, I probably could have leveled last round. I uh, I should definitely put start putting a couple traits on the board. Was there a way I could have put three traits on the board here? Oh, nice! I got my my best in slot. There might have been. Oh, I actually really like these items. These items are sick. And then yeah, it looks like blue buff is better. And then JG. And then tank items. We'll put it on Nar for now. And then figure it out later. Okay. I let me think about this. So you definitely want to get your units stacking up as soon as possible. So like I wanna put a bard and a misfortune on the field like ASAP. But also, like, I don't want to blow my entire economy. Option one, I go seven. Yeah, option one, I go seven right now, set up my board so that I start win streaking and I start stacking. Option two, I sack three. Don't sack, or don't stack anything. Or I guess you should say just to get less stacks because you don't have an MF stack. And then uh, you'd also lose a little bit of HP. I don't think it's Harm Assist. It could be Radiant Relics. Uh, it's not What the Forge. I like what, I like New Recruit here for That's Jazz Baby. I think we'll be able to get something here. Oh, now I wish I had that spat. I think it's New Recruit. Get more Jazz value. Um, A bunch of tank items is kind of sick, though. No, this is actually probably better. Impenetrable Bulwark. Alright, I'm a level. I actually need to roll until I hit 1 MF. Okay, I always do this. I always buy garbage. Alright, roll until I hit 1 MF. And then you can just chill and, and re econ up. I should also reforge something. Probably the cloak. Super fan. No, no, no. Not worth. Just roll until you hit 1 MF. That's the only thing that matters. 1 MF. One MF.
Okay, Reforge, just the cloak. These will be MF items. We got Infinity Edge, and then we'll look for Gwinsu's. I feel like a psychopath rolling to zero. But I really need this one MF just so that she can start gaining stacks. And so that Bard can start gaining his uh, seven synergy stacks. I, I'm pretty sure it's worth it, no matter how long it takes. Oh, did I lose? Oh my god, I won by like one auto. I need to move my items to Nico. Oh fuck, here's a spat. <laughs> I, uh, is there something good I can do here? I'm gonna take it, and I'll just like try to think really hard. Now I have big regrets of not taking the other one. I'm doing this mostly because uh, the item I want, which is the bow, is on a one gold, and I definitely need money. Fuck, it might be too late. Oh, I also need Echo. What? Let's dance. Okay, well, I'm going to keep on rolling because I desperately need one Echo. Oh my god. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I mean, it cost me. It cost me a lot of money, but I finally got my my units. I'm gonna. I probably lose like over twenty gold for rolling early. But the HP save and then hopefully the stacking. I'm praying will pay. It, will make up for it. I definitely would never do this in ranked. This is like psychotic. But I'm a man with nothing left to lose, so just try something interesting. I think this Lucian's kind of nuts. That means I could go 8. I think about this. There's one more synergy. What can I do here? You could drop Kai'Sa. Maybe that's the play. Drop Kai'Sa and then um, make a KDA spet. That's pretty interesting. I'm probably fucked though. I, I I rolled way too deep. I made the big all-in gamble of like roll until you hit MF, and it took 30 gold to do so. So my econ's kind of busted. If I do that, that removes... No, I shouldn't. I don't have seven traits if I do that. Uh, I might sell these Lilias. Do I really think I can hit? Someone's playing Disco. Yeah, the only play I can think of with this spat is, besides a fawn, make a, uh, make a KDA spat. Definitely slum this red buff. This Lucian is going to be able to stack up so unusually early. Oh, you know what I could do? I could do Senna for true damage rapid fire. Wait, I got smashed. Oh, actually, no, that kind of makes sense, to be honest. 
this guy is pretty strong. That is a very optimal Ezreal on 4 1. Yeah, I could do true damage spat, actually. That is interesting. And then you keep these Senna's. Then you get four true damage. Uh, well, it's not silver ticket or misconnections. Is there ever a rolling for days so I can try to hit my bard three right now? It could be. I really need this bard three. Nine free shopping rolls, 18 gold. You could say my board does have a lot of stats already. Okay. Just roll at seven, try to hit this bard three. I have a feeling that I'm not gonna hit this bard three. I need to make up my goddamn mind. I need to like either roll it down for Bard 3 or go 8 and then play a bunch of synergies. And I'm pretty sure Bard 3 is the play here. I spent a lot of effort getting a best in slot Bard. I should just go for it, even if it seems very unlikely. It seems very unlikely. <laughs> Holy shit, I am... I am so not going to hit. Yeah, this is... This is like not even close. All right, well, maybe I can hit an echo here. Boom. Okay, I'm pretty sure the game is just over, which is fine. There, even a first place wouldn't have qualified me for this uh, for the next day of the tournament. It was an interesting angle, but we, despite being uncontested, we did not hit the bards. I also think I tunneled too hard on this Lucian. I'm probably supposed to just, like, play the MF anyway, because it's the correct synergies. Alright, give me exactly a spat. Dang it. Uh, I'm down to go for the woke play, which is Trucian. Is it good enough? I doubt it. But is it woke? It's very woke. Trucian. And then I guess we're just never hitting this bard. Yep, let's go ahead and put it in. And then... I guess I'll still roll and like pray for the miracle. Roll down to 32 and then after that level. Yeah, okay, this bard, I hit five bards early and it's clearly just not happening. All right, let's see if Trushin can make it happen. Uh, I guess I could continue donkey rolling at eight, but I, I really don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> I uh, I don't think rolling at 6 was the play either. I, th I think rolling at 7 was correct, we just didn't hit, and that's fine. Sometimes you lock in a trait-specific augment, and then you don't hit, and it happens. This Trucian's so interesting, though. The fact that there's like a tiny chance that it pops off is kind of exciting. Okay, one bard. Oh, wait. No, you shouldn't buy this because you your bard is already stacked up a lot. Your bard is already halfway to the stats of a bard 3. And then if you hit bard 3, he's like almost a bard 4. I think you actually just sell these MFs. And then like only play at level 9 if you get the chance. Yeah, I believe that's the play. 
Which actually means you don't even need this um this Kaisa. That means any KDA unit will do. Well, if I make it if I in some miracle world where I make it to nine, I'm going to want the Kaisa. Is that a Rascal's Gloves or Kali too? I got owned. Alright. There's only one way out. It's hitting a Bard 3 and Nico 3. I'm going to lay out the flow chart. If I hit, you may pog. If I don't hit, you may also pog, because then it's Tekken time. We're going to Gamba for one Echo, three Bards, three Nikos, two Lucians, and a Diet Coke. Uh, it's a lot to ask for, especially because I'm level 8. You're supposed to roll at 7 for Bard. Well, you're supposed to roll at 7 for the combination of Bard and MF, but like, I hit this Lucian. Probably tunneled too hard on it, but let's be real here, I barely had any MFs. It was most likely doomed anyway. I think this Trucian is really funny. I've seen Lucians like pop off. Whoa, 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 whoa. Alright. Just roll fast. Just get through all of my money. Okay. Okay. Wow, um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's pretty sad. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, <laughs> it's fine. The result didn't matter anyway. Okay, wait, hang on. This guy didn't roll yet. What if I beat this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's not over yet. What if I just... Beat this guy and then hit both next round. Huh? My team just exploded. I think the Kale killed me with her AoE. Alright, I got owned. It's fine. I don't regret it. We knew we were at, we were doomed anyway, so I don't regret going for the woke bar uh, that's Jazz Baby play. We didn't hit, but it's fine. That's just how some games of TFT go. All right. I'm free from the shackles of TFT. I I want to be very clear on what I'm going to say next, because somehow, some way, every single time I talk about this, people misinterpret what I say. I don't hate TFT. I'm just burned out. I haven't been enjoying it for a while. I think most games are not very enjoyable if you grind that many hours in such a short period of time. TFT is a fine game, I just don't particularly want to play. So I'm pretty relieved that my TFT tournament career is done. It if It's like, if I win, cool, I win. I'll play until I lose. If I lose, cool, I'll go play Tekken kind of thing. The game isn't horrible. I just find it to be like unfulfilling after having played a lot of games. I will excitedly come back in set 11 and see like what they have cooking. But yeah, uh, I got owned in this tournament. I'm happy I got owned so hard that like it, it's not even worth thinking about what could have been. If I like didn't make it by one point, then I'd start thinking like, oh, if if I made the bonus points yesterday, I could have made it. Or like, oh, if I made this decision differently, if I was a little bit faster. Uh, yesterday, I definitely lost like three or four placements because I was slow. I didn't make my decisions fast enough and like lost HP, which directly affected the outcome of the game. This today, I I definitely just got fucked. I missed on so many rolldowns, and I'm sure I could have also played it better, but the fact that I didn't hit on any rolldowns, even if I made the correct choices, it wouldn't have mattered. That's what I'm going to tell myself so I can sleep at night. I With this result, we're prob we finished in like the bottom half of day two, which... Out of 160 players, that means my rank out of 160 is like 70, 70th, 
which is fine. I'm happy that I beat Coach Asa and Emily Wang. Good enough performance. I'm actually really surprised Coach Asa did not make it to day two. Like, I definitely think the game is very high variance. But he got day one on both tournaments. And he, uh... He was rank one in the previous tournament. So, like, he must have gotten extremely variance, or he must have, like, choked or something. Why aren't you surprised about Emily Wang not making it? I... Uh, I'm kind of surprised, but I've commented on this before. For whatever reason, Emily Wang does not have a good tournament history. So, like, when I saw she didn't make it out of day one, I was thinking, like, she might just, like, not be good under pressure, which is fine. It happens to everybody. Uh, Asa does have good tournament results, so it's, like, unusual. Like, th this isn't a jab at Emily Wang. Like, some people just, like... Are not good under pressure or maybe she low rolled a lot of games in a row but like i i understand how me saying like i'm not surprised that she didn't make it out of day one i understand why, how that can appear toxic i don't mean it in a toxic way uh, i also do not regularly have good tournament results so like i think it's fine also yeah asa was rank one so like i think that, that part is very surprising uh, in the end, TFT has this, TFT is this, like, very interesting game of, it's probably the most unique competitive game in the world. In terms of, like, games that have, like, millions of players, and, like, a big team, and, like, a multi-million dollar budget, TFT is probably literally the most unique out of all of them. Uh, like, the way the game is handled, and the way the game develops is incredibly unusual. Most games, like Overwatch or like League of Legends or Valorant have like these seasons and like every season like a little bit changes. Valorant or uh, TFT is like every four months the entire game changes. And uh, it, it, at any point, like if they have bad ideas, then the game is like fucked. And they had to like keep on having new innovative ideas time after time after time. And I would say on average, they're pretty good about it. Their ideas are like solid. Uh, there are usually sore spots because like it's hard to find ideas that everybody will like. Like, I think Headliner is very dev divisive. I personally didn't like it very much, but I can respect that they, like, tried something new. So, like, I still play, or played for a while. I, In my opinion, Headliners are just, like, way too high variance. I think it was, like, fine in set four with The Chosen, which is basically the same thing, but I was not a fan of Headliners here. Uh, I really stand by my opinion of, like, too many games are won or lost because you hit the correct Headliner quickly. And then, like, uh, or vice versa. Like, you didn't hit anything playable. I've had games where at 8, I have, like, 30 gold. I'm like, yeah, I'll roll to keep my streak. And then I hit zero four-cost headliners. Like, forget, like, the right headliner. Like, how about a headliner at all? And then I've had games where it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to play maybe Twisted Fate. And then instantly, boom, first roll, Disco TF. Game's over. I go 9 with 50 gold. It's really easy. And, like... Yeah, TFT is a game where, like, there's a lot of... It should have high rolls, but I think this isn't the way to do it. Like, if you hit three Rs in one shop, that is a freak occurrence that's, like, it's, like, one in a million kind of game, right? It's like, oh, I was trying to play Ari, and I hit three Rs in one shop. Boom, like, okay, yes, that is fine that, like, you high-rolled the game and got first out of it. It is not fine that, like, I don't know. I'm going to just throw out a random number here. Like, two or three of the players in each game just, like, hit a headliner that instantly, like, wins them the game. Or instantly secures their top four on their roll down. And then, like, other players are just, like, deal with the scraps. Okay, I'm going to settle. I, I was trying to hit a Karthus, but I'm going to settle for this Vex. Right? And then, like, I'm just going to, like, be really sad because I, I don't have enough money to try again. I'm personally not a fan of that. Um, there is definitely skill in, like, saving HP and salvaging placements. Like, if you are Mr. 100 streaking and you have 50 gold on 4-1 and you miss on your rolldown, a good player can probably find something to still salvage, like, stay alive and get a fifth place. And you can argue that's skill. Whereas, like, in my spot uh, in the tournament earlier, 
I went uh, I went level eight. I rolled. I thought I had a good board, and I was very healthy. So I was like, oh, I'll just go nine. And then I went eighth. I lost like five fights in a row. Went nine, lost again, and then died. So like clearly I suck. And like a better player would have probably been able to identify uh, what different units to take or what to roll for. Maybe roll deeper and then salvage placements instead of just being like, well, I got unlucky. That's an eighth. There is skill in that, but in in a competitive tournament where you only get six games, if you are in that spot, it's already like fucked. Imagine like how sad it would be if you like are the world's best player and you train very meticulously, you do VOD reviews. Something that Asa told me that he does, which I think is actually like insane, or insane as in like insanely skilled, he VOD reviews roll downs. He like watches 25 roll downs and then thinks to himself like, okay, uh, I think this could have been done better. This was wrong and this was wrong. You should have bought this, these units. Instead of playing a game to get better, he like isolates the game to like different sections. Kind of like, oh, I only want to practice team fighting in League of Legends. And then he kind of like, it's like setting up like only team fight drills. Uh, he like watches roll downs from different pro players and then he just like evaluates them and like figures out if he thinks they did it well, they did it wrong, uh, what could have been done better, how to optimize it. So then, and then he does that 50 times. And then it's like, holy shit, you're actually just like drilling it. Like, kind of like how soccer players like do drills of like to practice passing. And then like, I can only imagine the feeling of doing drills like that to practice, doing these things that like aren't fun, but like grind it out and like really make your skills sharper than other players. Hitting rank one and then like having two low roll games in the tournament where you didn't even get to play and then just being out. This will unfortunately always be an issue in TFT because if they were to make it so that the better player wins all the time, the game would not be fun for casual players. And if the game does not appeal to casual players, the game would not make any money. Right? Like these like competitive things I'm talking about only affect literally like in the hundreds of players in the world. Right? Like only a few hundred players are going to even be playing in these tournaments where these kinds of things happen. So like, I don't think they're going to do much about it because if Riot has the choice of like appealing to, uh, I don't know how many million players TFT has. I'm going to guess five. If, if they can appeal to 5 million players, or appeal to 300 competitive players, maybe 500 competitive players, they will choose the, the 5 million. Let's say 1,000 to 1 ratio. So as a guy in that 500, it's very frustrating. And I want to make this very clear because, again, people like to misinterpret my words a lot. Like, I'm not saying I'm the best in the tournament I should have won. I'm saying that as a player... In the higher ranks, I feel like my input doesn't really matter a lot of the time. It obviously does sometimes, but a lot of the times it doesn't, and it's very discouraging. It's like, why even try if my input's not going to matter? I, I will never VOD review because I don't feel like my input matters enough. If I had confidence that my input mattered, I would VOD review. But VOD reviewing is one of those like really boring ways that you can get better fast. If the stakes were high enough and uh, the skill expression were high enough, it'd actually be sick. I would drill the shit out of roll downs if, um, if I thought it was likely to make the difference. You're doing a little bit of yapping? I mean, yeah. I mean, I honestly think that everything I'm saying here is very reasonable. I'm, I'm done with TFT for the, the set, and I'm giving my closing thoughts on this. I... I'm not saying anything in a very aggressive way. I'm saying everything in an honest, like, this is my feedback after playing for a while. These are what I think the problems are, and this is how I hope they'll, like, address it, if, if even possible. Yeah, I, I honestly don't even think this is yapping. But yeah, uh... Box box, I honestly think a sandbox mode would help TFT. No, they specifically won't do that because it helps solve the game too quickly. There is an issue of if you solve the game too quickly, the game becomes really boring. Uh, if you ever play TFT at the end of a set, it's actually like very not fun. Uh, because everybody knows all the lines, and once everybody knows everything, it's just whoever hits. 
the game is actually significantly more fun at the beginning of a set because it's like nobody knows anything everybody's just doing like discovery there's a lot of like oh my god this combination of units with these items and these augments is insane and people are like discovering a lot of cool things like do you remember the patch where our it was a month-long patch where re sentinels was discovered i think it's very cool that nobody knew re sentinels was good I do think it was really lame that once it was discovered to be really good and the best build, every single game from then on for the rest of the month had three RE forcers. But like, I think it's cool that like, it actually took a while for that build to be discovered. RE was always thought of like as a, you play her with vertical KDA or you play her with spell weavers. Nobody thought to like, put her together with sentinels and to like, force it really hard. Even top level players were playing KDA RE rather than RE sentinels. Then one guy is like, hey, isn't it actually kind of good? Then he, um, like, he was like, hey, it doesn't actually make a lot of sense that Ari synergizes with Echo, who is a Sentinel Spellweaver, and then uh, you just throw in Lilia, who is a KDA Sentinel, and then you throw in just Seraphine for KDA Spellweaver. And, like, that quadro makes, like, this really nice uh, synergy, this synergy web, and then you can just, like, throw in vertical uh, Sentinels. And then the, the secret sauce was the Gunblade. The Gunblade is multiplied by the value of the Sentinels. That was actually very clever. The first guy who thought of that, and then he, the first guy did it, climbed 500 LP with it. Everybody's like, wait, this is actually good. And then now everybody forces it. The, the, the fact that like builds like that are hiding, waiting to be discovered is really exciting. But like once you get to the end of the set, I definitely feel like with millions of players, every good build will most likely get found. There was a time in set six where... um. There was a really viable endgame build, or really viable build, that was not discovered until the final patch. I thought that was very cool. Uh, it was called the Chug Bug. It was really funny. It was like two normally considered garbage one costs, Gragas and Kha'Zix. They were like Dawnbringer. They were one cost Dawnbringers. And Dawnbringer was like this trait where you like heal for a large amount of HP when you get low. You like gain a lot of health regen. And it was discovered that like if you rerolled these two normally garbage units together and then did some other rerolled some other one cost that synergized with them it created this really overpowered combination called the chug bug and i i, I think that's so cool like tft the fun of tft is discovery um if i had to say that there was a game that was similar to tft in terms of like how it feels to play uh but isn't tft i would say it's slay the spire i uh, and my brother plays a lot of Slay the Spire, and something really interesting happened. I was hanging out with my family, like, last year. Oh, I was, I was at my brother's wedding. Yeah, my brother got married. Good for him. Uh, and I brought my Steam Deck, where I play Slay the Spire. It's just, like, my go-to thing on a handheld. Uh, I was playing Slay the Spire, and in an attempt to, like, bond with my brother, we talked about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, I started playing the Watcher, the fourth character. What builds do you like to play? And then the first thing he, Franklin said to me, he was like, oh, are you sure you want me to tell you? And I was like, what do you mean? And then he's like, well, I just think that most of the fun is in the discovery of what works well together. And then I was like, wait, you're right. So then I actually had him not tell me. And then I got to enjoy finding out all the cool combinations. Right? For a single-player game, that makes a lot of sense. For a multiplayer game like TFT, you might as well just look it up. Look up the best interactions. And you know what happened? I had a lot of fun! I found a lot of cool interactions between the cards in Slay the Spire, which I would say is like almost like a single-player version of TFT. In terms of like how it feels to play. And like set up your board. Uh, and then, once I figured out everything, the game got really boring. The game got really boring. The moment I like figured out the good interactions, now all of my Slay the Spire runs look like this. I start my run, I look for some of the overpowered cards. Okay, boom. It's a talk to the hand deck. All right, I'm just gonna go stance swap, talk to the hand, uh, flurry of blows, and if I don't hit these cards, it's more Doug's fault. Now I just like go in knowing what's overpowered, and the moment I hit like the first piece of an overpowered build, I just like look for the remaining pieces of it, or it's a BG. And like, I just turned into like a Slay the Spire Soju. I, I've like sucked the fun out of it for myself because I like discovered all the overpowered combinations. Anyway, 
So the point I wanted to get across was TFT is the most fun at the beginning. I uh, the the fun curve of TFT always looks like this. It always looks like this, where it's like at the beginning of the set, right here, incredibly overwhelming. You don't really understand anything. You can't really have fun yet, but it's just like cool and new. At some point, it like clicks and like people are still discovering builds. You can have fun discovering builds too. You can, at this point, you can realistically be like, oh my God, like I saw this guy was doing really well with this build. This is like the box box bootcamp era where like, People are just like trying different sh uh, builds. Different people are like one tricking builds. And then like, it's like, wait, this guy was actually able to make Disco work. People thought Disco sucked. Oh my God, this guy made this build work. This guy's doing reroll NAR. Like, it's cool. Uh, then it gets optimized and then right, it does some balancing. And then the, the fun of it and like the new and shininess just like goes down over time. That will always happen. So I'm glad the sets change every four months. I. Uh, Riot recently asked me if I was still interested in doing a bootcamp for set 11. I, I believe I still am. I think the beginning of the sets are hype. Uh, I definitely think I have a problem, though, with burning out really fast now. I feel like every set I burn out faster than the last. Because even though I don't think set 10 is bad, I definitely feel like done. Not interested in playing anymore. Um, there are times, there, there's a lot of times where, like, when I have nothing to do, I just queue up for TFT because I just, like, casually enjoy it. But I haven't been doing that recently. Now I've replaced that with just like bored Reddit scrolling or mindless masturbating, even though I'm not even horny. And like when you're just like jerking it because you have nothing else to do, like something's wrong. Something's really wrong. But yeah, like, in the past, when I was bored, I would just queue up for TFT off stream. Like, I just enjoyed it so much. But, like, I would say set 8, I played until the end, even though I didn't like it. Or, let me rephrase that. I didn't like the hero augments, but I liked the set overall. The units were fun. Uh, I felt like there was a good amount of skill, but I just felt like hero augments were, like, a massive swing in variance. Games were won or lost based on if you hit the correct hero augment. Then set 9 was... In my opinion, really good. I think set 9, not 9.5. 9 was really good. I uh, I think legends weren't properly balanced, but like otherwise, like the ideas were good. They just didn't get the numbers correct. Then 9.5 was not good. I'm not sure what they changed exactly, but it was not good. I uh, 9.5 was very frustrating. And I believe that was the first set that I finally like stopped playing the game before the set ended. Usually, like, I play, like, up until, like, the next set releases. But, yeah, 9.5, I actually said, like, I'm having so little fun that I'm going to just quit. Uh, it was actually the same thing as this, where, like, I played the tournament, and then after the tournament was over, I was done. I think it actually was just the balance of Legends. Because Legends was actually a really cool idea. That was probably my favorite, like, set mechanic or gimmick. They just didn't balance it right. And again, to be fair, in their credit, it is hard to balance. I'm not saying, curse you, Riot Games, you should have done better. But like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they get it right. If they got it right, it would have been probably the most fun set of all time.